welcome to a special New Day Tuesday edition of Now Kiss. Ah, we're excited here because we're going to play more Arcade Spirits. Hold on. Right corner, there we are. I was just uh, fixing up our preferences. I just hit start instead of load because I'm an idiot. Good. No, it's okay because yep, I got can it. just go to... Of course, there's no quick load here. Well, there's... I can just quit. Yeah. I quit the game. Yeah. Do it. Now. Do it. <sighs> yes. You did it. I did it. Good job. I know. Hold you on. are a genius. I did forget to change something in preferences, though, because uh, we want full screened, not uh, windowed. All right, so load. Back to... Back to our dating simulation. So if you missed the first stream, actually, let's talk about this game a little bit, though. Yes, please. All right. Jacob, what's up with the game? So this is Arcade Spirits. Mm -hmm. It releases today. You can go buy it on Itch.io or Steam. Yep. Or uh, a, Humble. A Humble. Uh, a ton of different platforms. It is released... As of an hour an ago. An hour ago. Yep. Uh, it is actually released an hour ago. We are playing it on New Day Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Uh... I am, uh, my name is Jacob Burgess, if, in case you don't know me, I am a voice actor and a games writer. I am also the uh, community and influencer relations manager for Yeezbrid Giz Games, and for Arcade Spirits, I did all of the casting and directing. Um, I am also one of the minor characters in this game because we needed to fill the slot, and I was there uh, along with Graham, who I think we should be getting to today. <gasps> uh, we have an absolute amazing cast. Um, I'm going to pull everybody's bios up on my phone if you want to catch the first half of this. We did the first half of a special preview on um, uh, Friday. Um, uh, this was my first... I've done creative consulting for a bunch of folks and, and VO consulting and things like that. This is my first big casting and directing project. Um, we have an amazing cast and the voiceover, if I do say so myself, is mwah, at least it makes me very happy. I hope it makes everybody very happy. Two Flower and uh, 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 Sharky Anna, who I uh, maybe, I th I'm sure Two Flower is here. Two Flower is um, in chat. Yes. Two Flower is in chat. Excellent. Hello, Two Flower. Are some of the loveliest, bestest clients I have ever ever had um and i'm incredibly proud of this project and incredibly proud of this game and delighted to be playing it mm -hmm. and totally not freaking out at all yeah it's fine yes uh so so, so yes. if you like this game go tell your friends if you have friends Please. who play dating games or like dating games but are like uh oh, i wish more games like a lot of the indie dating games that are coming out do great jobs with uh queer representation and yep. like non-gender binary choices and all of the things that make people happy and are not, I mean, are some extra work, but not that much extra work to put in the game for the amount of joy and happiness that they bring to the world. Yes. Uh, uh, but this is, a uh, so far, what I have seen is an excellent example of that. So if that's kind of your jam, please look into it. Yeah. Um, also, Two Flower, a longtime member of the Low Hurry Run community, Indeed. so it's really cool um, to, to see wonderful things come from our our uh, our our wonderful community here. Uh, Jacob, our water's boiled. Do you want to go get your coffee? I'm going to go get my coffee. But yes, before I do that, I do want to say I absolutely agree with you. Queer content and representation uh, is incredibly important. And um, one of the reasons why I am so proud of this game is that it does have that. Um, and we did our best to cast representatively as well. Um, everything that I write, everything that I do, I, I try to make sure that it has representative queer content. And that includes... Um, the, the video games I've worked on and, and even the, the vampire stuff, the Vampire the Masquerade that I'm doing, I'm making sure that it has representatives so people can see yourself in the game and everything. Uh, and also the puns are fantastic and I'm going to go get my coffee. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, hello QH says, I am all here for that gay she. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Uh, while Jacob's getting his coffee, I'm going to be reading some uh, of our wonderful subs and resubs and supporters. Then we'll get into the game properly because I, I, eh, it's perfect. It's a it's a great way to use that time of Jacob pouring coffee. Ryan restarted for 19 months. Or Ryan restarted, subscribed for 19 months in a row, saying now kiss again. Lady Lay subscribed for 21 months. Amore Lingue subscribed for 12 months, saying one year of quality. Here's to many more. 
Hooray, Ag, uh, Agnor33 has subscribed for 62 months, saying, woo, look forward to playing this. Exact, exact chicks, Kitsune, subscribed for 41 months. Yomidan, subscribed for 26 months. Yeah, Yomidan. Excuse me while I kiss this day. Pulse Evo, subscribed for 53 months. Uh, uh, Zapelli Jacob, subscribed for 11 months, saying, I so enjoyed Jacob with the streams. Good to see you. Also, welcome back, it's Kathleen's voice. It's mostly here. Moosefield Cat subscribed for 53 months, saying I can't wait to play this game for myself. Thanks to, for all the hard work, everyone who contributed to it. Looking forward to the stream. Diamond Tiki <coughs> subscribed for 45 months, saying, Yay, Kathleen and Jacob times. I was watching the Oz Mafia VODs, and this will be a welcome balm from that. Yes, Oz Mafia is the game <laughs> that pushed me into the no more Otome games ever territory. <laughs> Frankenstein subscribed for 20 months. Uh, Rathmus... Ras Mythic subscribe just subscribe. Welcome to our community, Ras Mythic. I'm delighted to see you here. Killer Palms subscribe for eight months. <coughs> Not Kane, nor Abel subscribe for seven months, saying work from home today because of the snow and an extra now kiss. Great day. Thank you so much. Blade Wolf Jr. 1412 subscribe for 36 months. Not Kane nor <coughs> Abel. So Seth. Um uh Yes. Uh, one thing I did want to say, uh, somebody in the chat said I'd love to see Jacob on L.A. by night. Go tell Jason Carl on Twitter. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would also like that. I feel like we can, we can, sometimes people can, the, the Twitter pesters, if they're polite. If they're polite and nice. And explanatory. Yes, indeed. Not just, go do that thing. Yeah, yes. just like, hey, I think this person would be great for your thing. Yeah. Some tag some, them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and Admiral Matt subscribed for 43 months in a row. Ooh. I feel like my voice is not entirely back, but it's just like a little it's bit pretty, like Do you want I I would you like some of my special tea? Is it got honey in it? A little bit. I don't Are do you sugar. That's right. You don't do sugar at all. That's right. You know how miserable it is to have a sore throat and you don't eat sugar so you can't do any honey remedy um i can imagine how miserable it is i don't i don't with that myself i i would I, I once i decide to not do something i'm extremely uh i'm extremely i just hold to it i'm like well i guess my throat is it's in pain <laughs> i i like your lo level of commitment That's uh good. i am a very uh stubborn i always i like to describe it as experience the freedom of absolute control I have no polite response to that. Isn't that just, like, <laughs> terrifying? That indicates that you have more issues than a comic book shop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I do, Jacob. But I like to think I channel them into a good, usually humorous purpose. And my voice sounds great. Absolutely. It's a little bit lower. It's a little bit huskier. It's a little bit sexier than my normal nasal uh, Fran Drescher. Nice. Uh <laughs> Avey you subscribe for 28 months. This button again already. Time flies, especially when you've got a thesis to write. Uh-oh. Uh, I know that feel. I am currently writing a 10-week-long thesis for the Dungeons & Dragons channel. Uh, <clears throat> anyhow, let's uh, load our game up and let's go. Uh, yes, I do. Oh, yeah, because we had another thing that we briefly... And Octavius subscribed for 62 months. Yes. By the way, I've booked a birthday party for this afternoon. Oh, that's right. There's a children's birthday party coming yes. in? Oh, man. All right, let me get the cast up to make sure that I am prepared. Oh, and Count Notarona subscribed for 33 months saying, Ooh, look at that. I've been subscribed to Lure for two whole butts. <laughs> nice. All right, children's birthday party. Let's do this. And Gavin looks unimpressed. Ashley looks confused. Naomi looks confused. Oh, dear. The looks of confusion and outright terror on their faces and all the laughter dying off immediately are vaguely concerning to me. Sorry, sorry, I meant to tell you, dears, but I plum forgot. <laughs> I love her. Thank you very much, Aveyu. I feel like I uh, was maybe channeling a little bit of Francine when I was playing uh, uh, Serge's character's uh, grandmother. Oh, lovely. Uh, yes. Last night on stream. Yep. Um, what the, what's this like? Huh? What piece of music is this? It's from Fantasia. Da -da 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 -da. Is this Night on Bald Mountain? 
No. I, I I'm mean, not I don't... classical music. Two flowers in chat. He'll tell I think, me. I think it's something similar. Oh, lol, bald mountain in the background. Yes, it is. This... Okay. I'm not much of a classical music person. Yes. Um... So just to let everybody know, I've been introducing the cast as the characters have shown up, and then I'm talking about their the the actual like actor behind that and some of the stuff that they've done and where you might know them from. Um, if you want to know about the cast list, that I like watch the vod. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat from last week, but anybody new that shows up, absolutely. Uh, and you can also go to arcadespirits.com because we put the cast list stuff in some bios and things like that. But I will introduce them as they show up and a little tidbit of what it was like to work with them. Fantastic. Uh, I do like Night on Bald Mountain is a good choice because yes. most people have seen Fantasia and know that that corresponds to a scary part. So like some sort of childhood memory of terror triggers when you hear this <laughs> song, which I assume was the intention of the developers, but a thoughtful music choice nonetheless. All right. Anyhow, a birthday party. Oh, wait, you're Gavin. Oh, yes. A birthday party. How old are the kids, may I ask? <gasps> Oh, it's our fifth birthday! And to be young again! I mean, have it, have, I have a three-year-old, and I think three-year-olds are delightful. I can only imagine how good a five-year-old would be. So I'm, I personally like think this would be nice, but I think Francine might be the only person who agrees with me. F five-year-olds? Naomi starts pulling at her hair, eyes wide and trembling. Throwing ski balls overhand into the glass? Jumping up and down on pinball machines? Putting chewing gum into the coin slots? Five-year-olds aren't that bad. Pulling at my costume to- Oh, did, were you Ashley? Ah, uh, sure. All right. <coughs> Pulling at my costume, tearing pieces off it. Naomi, Ashley, keep it together. We've survived kids' birthday parties before. Doom! Doom! The end is nigh! The end is nigh! Well, I'd hate to get in the way of all the fun. Time for my afternoon nap anyway. <laughs> Have fun, dears. <laughs> I love Francine. She is the best. Right. Battle stations, everyone. I'll take ticket desks so I can oversee operations. Ashley, greet the kids. Naomi, watch for hardware damage. Ari, roaming duty. Look for trouble. Do what you can. Prepare yourselves. They are coming. Like an oncoming oh tidal wave. The rumble oh. is felt before it is seen. Parents pulling into the parking lot, minivans disgorging kindergartners, and suddenly. The, uh, the subtle, like in the background, children's noise was uh, super good. An explosion of small humans rushes the doors, bursting into the arcade before scattering every which way. Even before any of them can get tokens, they're grabbing at joysticks, mashing buttons, eager to get their game on, or even just to pretend to be playing. The crew assumes battle stations, Naomi by the fragile pinball machines, Ashley near the door trying to distract the incoming kids to greet them. Gavin armed with pre-stack, $10 rolls of tokens, quickly exchanges them with the adults, beats waiting in line with the change machines. As for the programmers, well, Queen Bee and Teo's friends bolt for the exit, abandoning them. Keen on getting out of the head of the surge of kitties, I guess. And that's all very well and good, but I've got no idea where I'm supposed to be. Roaming duty, Gavin said. Look for trouble, Gavin said. I mean, I was doing that before, but now the chaos has multiplied. For a few minutes, I'm like a pinball being bounced around, or that frog trying to cross a highway of traffic. Eventually, I spot three possible problems on the rise, and RA professional floor attendant is ready to attend to them. Which one of these should I tackle first, though? I may not be able to deal with all of them in time. Okay, two kids fighting over a box of cupcakes near Naomi and Ashley. That's near Naomi and Ashley. That's one of them will... Two kids, their parents will sort that out, or Naomi and Ashley will step in. Okay, little girl crying over her stolen tickets near Percy and Gavin. That sucks, uh, but Gavin is there and Percy's a nice person. And an angry adult shaking at a kid. That's where we gotta go first. We gotta save that kid. Also, Teo and Queen Bee don't work here. Yeah, no. Right? Yep. That's literally our job. Yeah. The sounds of hardship call for me from the Fast Five Cars racing games. Shouting adults and crying children are never particularly good signs, and I hope beyond hope I can take this on. I shake the discomfort off. Now is not the time to doubt myself. I need to find out what's going on and stat. 
to get closer to the revving engines and clacking of shifting gears, I see a grown woman berate a cowering boy. I did it. Oh, that's that's me. Oh. <laughs> I forgot I also did the kids. No. Oh. Admit it, I know what you did, you brat. You manipulated my precious son to put his tokens in your kit. You should be ashamed of yourself. I, I'm <laughs> sorry. Children like you are the absolute worst. Garbage. Jesus Christ. Ma'am, keep your voice down. There's no need to shout at a child, no less. What's going on here? Ellipses. This jerk of a boy told my sweetest beyond sweet Josh that he should put his tokens into the raising machine so he could play it for free. Josh earned those tokens from his allowance. I won't let some devil child steal his money. I'm glad to see that we can make, that we can write bad people without subtlety. Still. Yeah. You can just be like, this person's bad. <laughs> Fuck it. Ah, oh, let's just take a moment to calm down, okay? Before saying anything else, I spot Queen Bee and Teo out of the corner of my eye. Queen Bee looks infuriated and Teo has, has buried his face in his hand. Actually, now that I, I can stop to think about it, they might have some insight. The racing games are right next to the showtime stage. Teo probably had a good vantage point of the whole thing if he was dancing. And just by the way Queen Bee's browser furrowed, I could tell something is not sitting right with her. I could ask one of them for help. Or I could try to solve this one by myself. I mean, if Teo was dancing, how into it would he have been? If Queen Bee, who's not nearly at, usually at this end of the arcade, is like... Oh, Queen Bee's in this situation. I'm not thinking logically. Oh, You can yeah. work this out. Well, I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like I just want to talk to her anyhow, but I yeah. feel like somebody who wasn't actively playing a dancing game will have better insight. That makes total sense. I agree with you. Let's talk to Queen Bee. Yeah. Since Queen Bee has been consumed by rage, I bet she knows what's going on here. I wave over. I wave her over to join us, and I attempt to reach out to her for guidance. Ma'am, I know I. I know you're upset right now, but I what think that. I love her. Uh, uh, here, go ahead, go. Ahead. Oh, that lady's a no good piece of shit. Nope, not helping. This is in <laughs> fact the furthest away from helping I could ever envision. The kid runs away to avoid the lad people as I try my best to defuse the situation. I. That boy did nothing wrong. Nothing. Um, excuse me? <laughs> Pardon? How dare you? There's no way I'm getting a word between these two. I sigh and resign oh. myself to watching it play out. <laughs> How dare I? How fucking dare you for yelling at that kid? I don't care if he did what you claim or not. You've got no right to traumatize him over it. She is oh. correct. Foul mouth, but correct. He's a thief and he'll grow up to be a no good criminal. Children have a very poor grasp of ethics. You have to teach that to them because they're children. And you don't do it by screaming at them. That still doesn't fucking matter. Do you honestly think that they take a single fucking second, like, take a single fucking second of your life and really think that shouting at a child is an effective way to handle this? Ugh, you can't tell me how I should act. Who do you think you are? I am the nemesis of evildoers. Writer of wrongs, the rising star of L7 Gaming. Is that a music reference, L7? I think it's N7. I think it's a Mass Effect reference. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. Two Flower, <laughs> you're in the chat. What is it? Queen Bee poses in her signature pose. <laughs> I, I, it might be the he may laugh pose. Uh, <laughs> or no, that's sorry. He yep. may laugh. Ha 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 Nah, it's an L7 band reference also because L7 equals a square. That is amazing. Ah. That's really cool. Excellent. Thank you, Queen Bee. Uh, uh, two Flower. They, and thank you, Two Flower. If L7 is sort of a famous uh, Riot Girl uh, um, band from like uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Very like I, female empowerment. Yeah, I think that was the, I think that is the reference. Yeah. L7 is a band. I, yeah, I but just imagine. why they're referencing that particular oh, band. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, two Flower can uh, let me know, but or let us know. No hey. one can defeat me, Queen B. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love her. And in the name of the Funplex, I'll punish you. Well, I've never, in all my years. You're far worse than that impudent child. I, I like how uh, in the name of the fun plex, I'll punish you is a Sailor Moon reference. And we have Sailor Moon in the game, but not this character. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Angry mom. Josh! I'm, I'm, no, that's unrealistic. Joshua! <laughs> we are leaving this horrible arcade. Right now. Well, that's one way to handle that. Woman scoops up her child and storms out the front door. I don't think we'll see her or her son anymore, and frankly, I'm okay with that. Mm. Once they are gone, Queen Bee turns her attention back Come to me. Come on! Ugh, people like that really piss me off. My blood's still boiling. Oh, hey. Ooh, she says, hey, thanks for the backup. Yes, we'll never talk to her or her son again, says Swamp Lore. Uh, you're welcome. I really didn't do much of anything. Yeah, well, I knew you had my back, kid. I can sense that you're like me. I can't stand to see people get screamed at. Stepped on, however. <laughs> it sucks, you know. Hey, thanks for the host, Sharky Ann. Queen Bee's whole aura has changed from her normal upbeat snark to being completely down in the dumps. <clears throat> ah, this is a side of her I haven't seen yet. She looks just so sad. I know it's really none of my business, but I feel like I should ask about this. Looks like the incident hit her hard. Hey, is everything alright? It's, it's okay, you can tell me. She pauses for a second before her normal smile creeps back on her lips. Aw, oh, you're sweet. Seriously, I'll be fine. I just don't like seeing adults treat kids like their future's nothing. Like they'll be worthless stains on society. That's... That comes from a deep, real place. That's not just a, a feeling that just bubbles up unprompted. <laughs> I, a lot of people tell me I could never be a professional gamer, that I should quit daydreaming. And I say, fuck those people and don't let anyone tell you who you hey. are. Thanks. Hey. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it, kid. Okay, show's over. You should go check on that boy. Oh, the boy! I totally forgot. You're right. I always am. Yes, my queen. Now, if you excuse me, I need to squeeze in a few more matches before Later. quitting time. I'm out, kid. Okay. Queen Bee takes one more moment to triangulate the safest path back to Fist of Discomfort through a sea of children. After pulling around a bit, I managed to find the kids still shaken up from the whole ordeal. Hey, sorry about that. Are you going to be okay? I I think so. I swear I didn't do anything. The other kid, he just came up out of nowhere and dropped his token in my slot. After I lost, I got off the game and offered it to him. He just ran away. Then that woman approached you and started yelling. The boy nods, wiping his snotty nose on his shirt. Uh-huh. Well, if it's any consolation, the bad lady is gone, and I don't think she's ever going to come back. Especially after the way Queen Bee burned her. Though with the boy's cheeks still streaked with tears, lets a smile spread on his Thank face. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And tell the other lady thanks for sticking up for me, too. I nod, and the boy scurries off and rejoins some of his other friends. Right, that sorted out. Uh, the other two situations are about to spin out of control, and I've only got time to deal with one of them. Which one? Hmm. Uh, fight crime or get food? I still feel like two employees can take care of a box of cupcakes. Like, I know I'm supposed to be on floor duty, but there's only so much I can do. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go help this girl with her stolen tickets. I weave my way through waves of children towards the ski ball machines. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. I need to look at Mr. I need to look at that arcade box, but there's a kid in the way. One little girl sitting at the end of a skee ball ramp, crying. No parent in sight to settle her, so the task falls to me. I think it says Mario Marty? No, no, no. <laughs> Something else. Okay. I'm guessing I should be more cautious about this sort of thing, with the lawsuit happy parents lurking over by the vending machines, ignoring their kids, but <coughs> <coughs> floor attendant already decided to take the case, all the same. Hey, hey, my name is Ari and I work here at the arcade. What's wrong? Can I help? Her sobbing pauses and she looks up at me. I lost my tickets! Someone stole them from me! I played and I played and I played and I won a bunch of them, but then I put them down and I was talking to a friend and now they're gone! I glanced around, but in the sea of kids it's impossible to tell who the thief could be. I don't even have any more tokens to play with. Oh, I spent them all on ski ball and now all my tickets are gone! Wah! Easy, easy, easy. We'll figure this out somehow. I want this girl's t-shirt. Although I've got no clue to where to even to where to even start, to be honest. 
<sighs> Maybe there was a witness to the crime. Percy would have had a good view of the redemption game area based on where Moopy's positioned. He could have spotted something. Or I could just bend the rules and solve this directly. Hmm. So, do you want to get closer to Percy, Gavin, or just do it on your own? Hmm. I mean, it's our first day. We can deal with taking a little heat. You know, there's a certain amount of social credit that one has that we could spend giving this kid replacement tokens. Okay, I see if I could talk to Percy. Or we could talk to Percy. Uh, okay, don't worry. I'll get your tickets back one way or another. Because, like, if this doesn't work, I can also just be like, have some tokens. Yeah. yeah. Or talk to Gavin and be like, this girl got her ticket stolen. She's very sad. sad. Yeah. These things cost us nothing, probably. <laughs> really, Ari? Wait right here. I'll be back in a gif. I need to look at the bottom of the Mr. Moopy. I talked to Percy, tapping him on the shoulder to get his attention. Hmm? Sorry to interrupt, but that girl in pink over there, someone stole her tickets. I was hoping you saw something. Um, right click hides the UI, two flower says. <clears throat> no. Well, I gotta wait till Percy's out of the way. Okay. Frowns a little, a little looking, slightly embarrassed. Well. Sorry, love, I've been pretty deep into this run and I wasn't exactly paying attention. Poor girl. Oh, wait, that's you. Yeah, that, Sorry. Well, that's okay. Poor girl. The ruffians absconded with their tickets, you say. Yeah, well, I can't exactly expect you to babysit. I just, I'll just go check with Gavin. No, no, no need for that. This obstacle can be removed rather readily, and perhaps be an object lesson as well. He steps away, letting his extra lives croak one by one. Something more important has clearly captured her, his attention. Hello, hello. Hello, my name's Percy. You say you need tickets? I just give her the covered crowns if I was her. Yeah. Fifty tickets, if I recall. Tall order, but certainly achievable. Here, let me show you the best way to reach your goal. He leads our little group of short ways over to a game of colorful spinning lights. Skeeball, even when played well, has an expected value of four tickets per token. But this game has an EV of <laughs> ten if you're sharp enough. What's an EV? <laughs> Estimated value. Estimated value, got it. He demonstrates, dropping in a token. The lights start swirling around and around. Until he snaps out and pushes a single control button with perfect timing, capturing the right ring between two pink gold posts. Twelve tickets come streaming out of the slot. The maximum possible for Lovely. Tickets. Simple, yes? Here, I can spot you some tokens to get started. Hold on. That looks distinct. Mr. Moopy looks a little bit like Spoopifer. Which it's is one of our characters. Almost like one of the developers is a Loading Ready Run fan. I, I will take this as a delightful nod in our direction. <laughs> I didn't even catch it uh, the first time I saw it, but I will say that is awesome. There there might be more Loading Ready Run references later on as well. Really? How cool. Well, I noticed the coffee shop is called The Whole Story. It is called The which Whole is, Story. Which I was like, oh, that's a fun pun name, but it is also a name of a series of videos that we did like 10 videos in. Weird. Yeah. That's so strange. Yeah. Simple, yes? I don't want to assume that it's just... I don't want to assume people are talking about us, though. What's that? I don't want to assume it's like a reference to us, because it's a fantastic name for a pun coffee shop donut store bookshop. No, I'm sure it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. I did mention one of the developers is a Loading Ready Rent fan, right? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. I don't know if I threw that out there, but it probably doesn't oh, have Oh, we're talking to do. about you. <laughs> Simple, yes? Here, I can spot you some tokens to get stopped. Produces a short stack of brassy tokens from the ample supply in his pockets. But the girls just sort of stares at the game, confused. Uh -huh. This game's really boring. Pardon me. Boring? It's got colorful lights, see? And it pays very well. But it's boring. I like rolling ski balls into the holes. Y you want those crans, yes? And this is the most efficient way to get them. The girl sighs, disappointed, but she's not crying anymore. The distraction was enough to crack her out of the feedback loop of despair, I guess. She hands the tokens back, the stack clinking lightly into Percy's Thank open you. Hand. Thanks, mister, but I got other crowds at home. I guess I'll just use those. Not exactly the cheer up, but not exactly weeping. She mixes back into the crowd to find her friends to play with them instead. 
Huh. Oh, that's you. Sorry. Huh. No, that's okay. That's totally fine. Uh, what were you saying earlier about the freedom of total control? Yeah. Well, my apologies, Ari. Seems I've let you both down. <laughs> Although I must confess to be rather puzzled by this. If you have a clear and distinct goal, what's so bad about accomplishing it by the most direct means? This speed runner logic. Yeah. This guy <laughs> plays Magic the Gathering if he's talking about EV. <laughs> She's five. I think she cares more about fun than expected value. Well... I'll admit my experience with children is unorthodox. I suppose it best to admit my failure in this moment and move on. I'll let it ride, but curiosity takes me. You can't just drop a phrase like, my experience with children is unorthodox without explanation. I can't say I had a particularly normal childhood myself, but I'm guessing that's not what you meant. <coughs> Percy coughs, feeling a bit caught in a bit of a, feeling caught in a bit of an odd moment. Well, yes, well, I meant it. Well, what I meant to say was, how best to phrase this? I suppose my own experience dealing with children was unusual. Really just my little sister, and she was hardly ordinary. More extraordinary by any measure. But she'd have been thrilled to find an optimal way to get as many tickets as possible, as quickly as possible. It'd be a challenge to her. No, his sister's the one who plays magic. But this isn't the time or place for reveries. Others need your help today, Henri, and this old man's got a game to conquer. Much obliged. But thank you for trying to help that girl. And thanks for allowing me to try to help. Even if we both struck out, it shows character. <clears throat> Percy returns to his game, having lost most of his extra lives. But he doesn't seem to mind the setback. If anything, he's smiling more than he was a minute ago. Two problems in the can! Now I'll deal with that cupcake problem I... Uh-oh. Too late! The vintage midway cabinet <laughs> Naomi just finished fixing up. It's covered in icing. Looks like Ashley's costume is going to need dry cleaning, too. I shoot them a hapless look and shrug. Hey, Ari. Kind of wish it was pink icing. Then nobody would notice. Yeah, sorry about that. I wasn't quick enough. You still helped out. I saw you with those other kids. You're a natural. I think things are winding down anyway. Why not take a break? Then I'll swap off with you and take a break myself afterwards. Uh, yeah, okay. Sounds good. Honestly, I'm kind of worn out. Ashley's right. I need to step away from this craziness, if only for a few minutes. After a silent nod from, Ka from Gavin to confirm it's cool with him, I slip away, headed for the employee lounge. What a day. Quirky co-workers, diehard pro gamers, volatile kids getting into volatile situations. I'd say it's a recipe for wackiness or some such cliche, but nothing's an easily dismissed cliche when it's happening to you directly. Frankly, I'm exhausted. I drop into one of the cheap folding metal chairs in the employee break room, groaning and rolling my head back and try to work the kicks out of my sore shoulders. <laughs> and spot an upside down kid? Huh? Oh wait, I'm the one leaning backwards. <laughs> I set up and turn around instead. Better. Wait, what's a kid doing back here? Hey, uh... I think he was hoping I wouldn't notice him. Um, hi. Hi, and you are? Mikey. Okay, that's a start. Hi, Mikey, my name's Ari. So what are you doing back here? This is an employee's only area. Wait, there's a keypad. How did you get in? The guy at the desk dropped this. He holds out a piece of paper with the door code written on it. Huh, score one for Ashley's wild storytelling more, being more fact than fiction. Okay, but you can't stay back here. It's, well, I mean, I don't see any knives or stabbing implements left out in the open, so I guess it's technically a safe Please area. Please don't but... send me back out there. That is you. That is me. Well, this is curious. I lean in so we can be on the same eye level. Something wrong? You could tell me I work here, and I'm the person who solves problems. No, no problems, just don't want to go out there. You don't want to play with your friends? He gives me the most cynical, bitter laugh I've ever heard out of a kindergartner. I don't got any friends. I don't know anybody here. My family just moved to the city. 
And before that, we lived in another city. And one more for that, but I was too little to remember. Mom told me to come to the party anyway, and I didn't want to, but she took me anyway. And then she left, because she's got to work. Ah, new kid in town, huh? Oh, this is weird. He nods mutely. Still, I should have busted him there and then. Brought him back up to the party where the other parents could supervise him. I should have told Gavin. I should have enforced the rules of the arcade. Ah, it's okay, kid. I won't tell on you. If you want to stay back here for the rest of the party, I'll keep you company. Thanks. You really won't tell my mom? Nope. Why? I thought you wanted to make me go. You're an adult like mom. Hey, I wasn't always an adult. I was a kid once. <clears throat> the new kid in town, in fact. You were the new kid? Yeah, although for me that started happening back when I was ten. Again and again, moving from town to town, school to school, never really making any friends, not for years. Mom and Dad kept losing jobs and taking new ones, worse ones. Then they'd be working all day long, too tired when they came home to do much of anything. After years and years of this, I just stopped hoping things would get better. I decided I'd just take what I could get and go with the flow. What's that mean? It means you don't care. Some things are good, some things are bad, but you don't care. You just do what you have to do without ever really being sad about it. But that sounds so sad. You weren't sad? It's sad to never care about anything, right? Eh, I guess I was sad. I told myself I wasn't going to be sad, even though I really was. And then I bite my tongue hard. Because my, invol because my little involuntary trip down memory lane was not helping this kid out. It would have helped out little Ari if an adult did this for me. So instead, I decided to be the adult little Ari would have needed. Yeah. I'm not trying to, like, fucking pro pro proselytize to this child. I don't know him. <laughs> Everybody responds to this kind of thing differently. You know what helps me when I'm sad? Peace and quiet. That's why you came back here, right? All the beeps and boops, the kids laughing, the craziness. It's too much, but that's okay. If you need a quiet moment, I'll be right here with you. Okay. We sit here in silence for a time. I flip through my phone, but only half-heartedly. I want to be ready if he wants to talk. After a few minutes, he's okay with tugging at his shoelaces and looking at the floor. For a few minutes, he's okay with that. I don't know what to do. Hmm? Everybody's having fun. I, I don't know how... I don't know how to make friends and have fun. I, I can't even try. I just mess it up. It's tricky, that's for sure. But there's always a good thing about going with the flow, too. It's not always sad. Think of it like... Okay, imagine a cup of water. Huh? A cup of water. What happens when you pour it into a bowl? Does the water still shape like a cup? That's silly. It's bowl-shaped. Exactly. People can be like water, too. You just know how to... Just, you, just, you know how to be quiet and peaceful. And you just need to know how to flow. Watch the kids out there. Watch who they talk to. Listen to what they talk about. When you hear something you can talk about, and it looks like they want to talk, but have nobody to talk to, that's when you can have some fun. I promise you some of the kids out there are just as sad. They want to have fun, and they don't know how. You could be the friend they need. <coughs> and Mikey's smiling. Not a big goofy grin. Not the high of happiness. Just simple understanding. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll go back to the party. And and I'll be a cup of water. I take his hand and lead him back out to the main room. How civilized. Normally you just have to hide in the bathroom when you feel like that. You sit on the toilet. Hmm? And you're like... <sighs> Everyone's gonna think I've got terrible diarrhea. But that's probably better than being out there, so okay. And then off he goes. I'm not fooling myself. I know I haven't fixed all of Mikey's problems. I'm no child psychologist. That was entirely me by, flying by the seat of my pants. But for one moment there, I was able to help someone in the same crappy situation I found myself in long ago. Fifteen years ago. Everything changed. No more family vacations. No more arcade visits. We couldn't afford them, and they couldn't take off the time off work. So if they were 10, I was 15, I was 25. The whole Cater family had to learn to settle, to accept the lot in life we'd been dealt, to simply go with the flow, never hoping, never wanting. 
Juniper did, me, did her best to pull me out of that mire. I've only known her a few years, one of the few stable times in my life, but she knew the edge I'd been pushed to. Now, here I am. Today has been, well, bonkers. Alternatively boring and hectic, surreal and way too real. I can honestly say I'm more alive today than I have been in a very long time. Beep beep. Beep beep, Ari. Huh? My emotional voice analysis subroutines combined with your body language suggests you're very happy right now. Um, yeah, I guess I am. How did you know? I just told you, silly. I mean, how did you know I'd love this job so much? Oh, I know. Oh, that's easy. I didn't. What? I lied. I was 47% sure. Oh, it has elements that seem to click with your optimal social requirements, a fun atmosphere, spirited co-workers, helping people out, and so on. Also, I cross-reference your roommate's postings talking about how much you enjoyed arcade visits when you were a kid. Still, 47%. 99.97%. But I was 99.7% sure that if I said I was 99.97% sure, you'd be willing to give it a try. Another thing to thank Juniper for, I guess. You're a very weird little app, you know. Hooray! I try to be. <laughs> Can you smell your- That's less than a pass! From the cars pulling up in the parking lot, it looks like the party's over. It's just about closing time for the arcade anyway. Most of the gamers have filed out by now if they hadn't already fled the tidal wave of kitties. My first impulse is to go bug Gavin about my paperwork, but and I can wait. I'd rather help someone with tidying up or maybe see how our VIP gamers are doing. <laughs> Not enough time to run around checking in with everyone, though. Who do I want to hang out with? I'll just sip my tea and look away. Uh, I think I'm gonna go help Naomi. Like, that? No. Uh. You're coming at this from a very logical place instead of, like, who do I want to bang? No, I'm not. That's not a criticism. I just. You and I are very different people, that's, and I enjoy that. That's true. Uh. I like playing dating games, but uh, the 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 banging is 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 less of a motivator for me. I just like getting to know people. Uh, I'm gonna so go Naomi. Help, yeah, I'm gonna go help Naomi. Naomi definitely looks like she could use a hand. Mm. Someone's jammed bright pink bubble gum into a coin slot. And she's trying to clear the sticky mess out. Something I do like about this is that there is that friendship. Like you don't have to go after it or play the game that way. There's that like straight up friendship angle, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, the best dating games I've played don't, like, I'm like, yes, there's a dating element, but there's some sort of mystery to uncover. <laughs> I just like stories. Kathleen is a very practical role player. That's fantastic. <laughs> the, the Percy of narrative. Uh, oh, wait, that's you. Oh, yes. How could they? How could they do this to a poor, innocent little Qbert? Hey, need a hand? Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, work on the second player slot for me. I've got swabs and stuff in my kit here. Grab what you need. So frustrating. Honestly, the nerve of these kids. No respect at all for these games. Games aren't like chew-proof, machine-washable baby toys. They're delicate and deserve love and care. But they are toys, right? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, just, you know, they're also works of art. Yeah. I know not everybody sees it that way. Back in the 80s, operators would just throw throw away games that didn't perform well anymore. In the end, an arcade has to make money. That means using and abusing a game until it's time to put it to pasture. Yeah. But I don't have to like it, right? I imagine like a field where just like a bunch of arcade cabinets are grazing. Mm. So if every day a game is running, it loses a bit of its finite lifespan. How long before they just can't be saved? I don't know much about hardware, but given your favorites are from the 80s, it seems like they can go a long time. Well, with proper upkeep and repairs, as long as parts are still available, or can be fixed up with modern components. A very long time indeed. And I'll be here for as long as they have me to keep my games up and playing. But you're right about being realistic. I need to be realistic too. I know this isn't a museum. We aren't preserving priceless treasures for generations to come. 
Sometimes I treat it like my little private collection, but really, I do want people to play and enjoy these games, and that does wear them down in time. As long as I'm here, I'll pick up a game when it wobbles on its feet, dust it off, straighten it up, and send it out there to be played with all over again. With the last of the gum pulled out of the slot, Naomi closes off her toolbox. I should probably pull the coin mex entirely and give him a good cleaning tomorrow, but I didn't want to let the gum sit overnight. I'm heading home soon. I'll see you tomorrow, right? You got it, Naomi. Woohoo! Great! She gives me a big hug before bounding off to her workshop. With things winding down, there's just one last thing to take care of before I'm out the door. I seek out Gavin to handle the remains of the day. <laughs> Ari, good work today. Phew. Thanks, boss. Mid-boss. Sub-boss. <laughs> Gavin, will do. Hmm. I can't say you've been a perfect employee, but I my standards great. are impossibly high, so I'll just assume you were as close to perfect as is reasonable. At least he's self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why you consulted Percy regarding those tickets. He's not on staff, but I suppose that's a minor issue. Normally, I've, I'd have dealt with angry parents myself, but I was distracted. I have only second-hand accounts of your performance there, but... Um, allowing Queen Bee to yell at the customers is questionable at best. She's volatile. I'd rather you have handled that one on your own, all told. I'm not pleased that you sold our Moopy for only a thousand dollars, not three thousand, as I've requested. Gavin, we only paid two hundred bucks for that game. I'd be ripping off a customer. A customer with exceptionally deep pockets, and one who squats on that game all day, spending only a handful of change in the process. If anything, three thousand is what we'd need to make up the lost profit from Percy being so Moopy obsessed. What's more, ellipses. Why isn't here, uh, why it's still here, is a good question. Was I not clear I wanted it gone? Percy didn't want to break up the family. They are machines, not people. He also didn't want Naomi to be sad. Yes, well, Naomi needs to learn to let go, I'd say, ellipses. Ahem. <laughs> are you giving up for a little Ari a hard time, Gavin, dear? Uh, Miss Francine, I... Thought you were napping. Let's be sensible. Naomi's dream matters too, as does the dream of Percy, that poor fellow. Poor? Isn't Percy stinking wet? <laughs> Everyone has a dream they're chasing. <coughs> <coughs> Gavin, I know you mean well, wanting to keep everyone's dreams afloat, but sacrifices made in the name which satter the dreams of others. Well, that's not what the Funplex is all about. Ari, you understand, yes, the reason why? Why am I, why am I here? Why am I here? That's the question she asked me <laughs> during the interview. Now I think I understand. I came here today looking for hope. Hope I could do more with my life than compromise, settle for what I can do, and go with the flow. Everything I've, everyone I've met today is full of hope. Gamers chasing scores, people following their passions. Nobody here is willing to give up on their dreams. Not even you, Gavin. Oh, this game is so anime. I know. You <laughs> you know we're better than this, Gavin. We don't settle. We chase after our hopes and dreams, and we won't settle for anything less. I see. Apologies. Uh, Ari, Miss Francine, I apologize. It's difficult to balance my idealism against my realism some days, but... I know in my heart I need to err on the side of idealism, even if my mind screams in protest. I can assume you are still keen to work here, Ari? I don't even hesitate before flying. Absolutely, and not just because I do need a job. Gavin fetches a nearby short stack of forms. Fill these out tonight. Hand them to me hand them in to me first thing in the morning. And welcome to the funplex. Yay! Welcome to the family, I'd say. I'm sure you'll fit in just fine, Ari. Yay, we have a job! Yay, nice job. Oh, this is a fantasy. We just got a job? I <laughs> just walk in and get a job? <sighs> oh. <laughs> One bus later, later, and it's home again. Jiggity jig. All right, oh. let's take a short break so I yep. can get myself a, something to drink. Yep. 
And then, and but before we go on this little teeny weeny breaky pooey, this little <laughs> susan of break. Uh, Dissimulate One has subscribed for 37 months. Miss Temperance has subscribed for 25 months. D Dubs has subscribed for 29 months. This game looks amazing. Love the writing so far. The Seg, hi Seg, subscribed for 34 months, saying 34 months of lure, not enough months of lure. Bladinus, subscribed for 26 months, saying really enjoying this with you too. Furby Breath, subscribed for 26 months, saying ooh, snow day, so I can watch live, yay! And Boom. it's Riley PM saying hey Jake and hey Kathleen, thanks for being awesome people. You're welcome, I, Riley. Oh, and Nathan oh. Longhair just subscribed for 40 months saying, well, this has been a slice, but I'm asleep. See you in the VODs, wonderful people. See you in the VODs, I assume my Antipodean friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're, I'm waving, but we're not going. Do you want to just put uh, yeah. the commercial screen? Right here? Yeah. Kabla. We'll be right back. I did a thing. We're back. Hello. 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 I got a cup of coffee and Jacob told me to drink more water. <laughs> it was like, I did. Yeah. He was like, your poor voice. <laughs> and I was like, what? What am I using it for? He's like, your job every day. <laughs> your job all the time. Well, I don't know any voice actor. You're a performer for the love of God. Yes. But I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be. Just drink, just. For the love, you're gonna give me a freaking heart attack. Uh, I, I bring my I'm own gonna, tea. I'm gonna go get a big glass of water after our stream is over. Good. And I'm gonna look you dead in the eyes and drink it in one point. Filtered and not from tap. It's definitely gonna be a glass of tap water. Our tap water here is excellent. Okay. So long as it doesn't have a lot of minerals and stuff in it. It has like enough for taste. That's All right. Nice. Cool. Like, I don't know how many minerals it has. It's very good tap water here in Victoria. Okay. I don't, I mean, I, I don't, I don't drink tap water. <laughs> Literally, the tap I'm, water that they, sir, that, that you get, the water that you get out of the tap here is I like. I actually never looked into it. I don't know what the filtration and stuff is here. It's very good. Oh, okay. Like, it's like Victoria and Vancouver, like British Columbia tap water is very good. Cool. In fact, our tap water, our municipal water, is often bottled and sold as bottled water. That's in, neat. In other parts of the country. It's, it's not, it is not something that I looked into. I'm just being Judgy McJudgerson oh, okay. from Judgerton. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Dasani used to battle Cal Calgary tap water, so suck it. <laughs> I believe mm. uh, I believe a lot of like Nestle bottled water is like from Abbotsford. Abbotsford, yeah, it's, it might be. So, uh, hey, you've probably been asked a thousand times, but what does Jacob recommend for keeping a quality voice? Well, that well, actually says James. So well, I'm just asking. No, hold on. I assume that was just a a dupe. Oh, I thought they wanted me to go ask James. Um, no, <laughs> so. Uh, Let's assume that was me. Uh, what does Jacob recommend for keeping a quality voice? Um, hydrate. It, water is incredibly important. I um, not drinking too many carbonated things is really really good too. I drink zero um, carbonated beverages because I hate them. Excellent. I it, if when I drink uh, carbonated beverages, it makes the devil talk out of my butt. So I try to stay away from them. Um, uh, so hydration is very important. Um, enough things to soothe your throat rest, uh, properly warming up before you have to talk for a very long time. These are all things that will give your voice longevity. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that you can do that are stop gaps, um, like cough drops and things like that, that will help you just get through a performance. But if you want long-term health, nothing beats proper rest, uh, hydration, and like sleep, quality sleep, and buddy, like hydrating before. If it's before a big performance, Overhydrate. Um, you'll get up in the middle of the night to pee or something, but overhydrate before the day of a big performance, and then while you're actually doing um, like the performance, you won't have to hydrate as much. You just have to pee before and after, and then hydrate after. It takes 45 minutes from when you're thirsty, from when you drink, for your body to actually absorb the hydration. Mm. So you, that's something to help you kind of ballpark it to time out. Uh, what you need to do. So, and Jacob, you would you drink. recommend water or another beverage? Uh, water or uh, what? The, nothing beats nothing beats water. Yeah, it turns nothing out nothing beats water for hydration. Turns out your body needs water, and plain water is the best. Yes, and sometimes drinking water is boring as crap. So people put mio and things like that. But I try to stay away from things that have 
uh, sweeteners and stuff like that. Um, like, you know, the, those like Mio squirts or Mio sprays. Oh, yeah. uh, typically, I like hot, hot water and honey lemon. Like, if I really need to do a thing. Yeah, Phoenix Malore, hot water and lemon. There you go. Uh, if you want some other tips and stuff like that, you can go to uh, Graham's blog, which we recorded while we were recording this. Mm. So I put in some free tips and things like that um, for that. Uh, yes, but if you want more stuff, uh, you can DM me. My DMs are open on Twitter, and we can talk about coaching and things like that if people want to do uh, stuff. Recovery. Uh, Sibwow says, can't beat the hot toddy. Uh, I love hot toddies for recovery, but never. That's only after I've done a performance and I don't have anything lined up. Oh. Um, it's it's got a lot of good stuff in it and whiskey. And Sarah Serinde, is... our very awesome hey. uh, mod, has already put a link to that vlog in our chat if you want to watch that. Yep. Awesome. Ah. Uh, oh, and Felix Melier says that they are in the process of cutting out pro uh, sugar because processed sugar is bad. For processed her, sugar. Yep. For her gut. Yep. As it turns out, and you know what? It's true. And and once you stop eating sugar most of the time, you're gonna go to the store and you're gonna be like, I do feel like treating myself because, like I said, I don't do sugar, but I like I like chocolate. Yeah. And, you know that's fine, but you buy like some like super dark chocolate and you're like, oh, so sweet. Yes. Or you eat like an apple and you're like, oh my god, what a taste <laughs> explosion. And you have yes. an orange and you're like, holy shit, this is why kids used to be excited to get these things at Christmas. These yes. things are incredible. Yep. Absolutely. Turns I, out fruit's great if you're not eating processed sugar all the time. Except for honey, I think I've cut sugar out of my diet except for the occasional, like I have fruit generally at night and then like I am obsessed with sweet and sour popcorn. Mm. Like that's my treat. Sweet and sour popcorn. Sweet. Sweet and savory popcorn. Or like, sweet and salty. Sweet and salty, not sour. Oh. Salty. Salty is the taste profile I was looking for. Mmm. <laughs> Ah. Mm. Yes? Ah. I was You're just right? thinking about <laughs> sweet and salty popcorn, and I was like, hmm. Oh, that actually sounds really good to me. <coughs> or sweet and so I'm confused now. Shall we continue? Yeah, let's continue. All right. All right. Juniper, already home from work, bounds over eagerly to interrogate me on my day. Hey, hey. I went well. Well or well? Really well. A little app came through, despite being terrifyingly omniscient and just a little bit unnerving. You forgot to mention adorable. That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear things worked out. And you even came home with a smile like when you were a lifeguard. Huh, I guess I am smiling. Interesting. By the way. By the way. There's just one oh. teensy weensy little question I have for you. Why exactly? Did you order a giant crate full of pizza bagels? Uh-oh. Uh... Um, did I neglect to mention that part of the terms and conditions? Uh, plus, I don't know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow. Pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. When pizza's on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime. And that's level one of Arcade Spirits complete. Yay! Hey, look, you also won a prize. You'll get one of these for each level you clear, plus some extras for various endings and other hidden thingies. Oh, what are the hidden thingies? <gasps> oh, no. Two flower are the outtakes. Let's see your score. Looks like you're really hitting it off with Naomi. You're a pretty basic person so far. Not hey, bad. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I am exceptionally weird. Hand me my pumpkin spice latte. Actually, you know what? Ow. I know Sorry. that people that people who are basic get a bad rap. Mm. But let's go over this. What okay. what what do basic people like? I... Fancy coffees from Starbucks. Yes. They're delicious. Yep. I mean that's true. You just get them half sweet. Yep. <laughs> Otherwise, they're just like oh, necessary. Much. All right. What else do basic people like? Scarves. Awesome. Staying home and watching Netflix, we all like that. Or an equivalent, such as staying inside and listening to music, or staying inside and playing video games. I think we need to reclaim basicness. You know what? It's okay to be basic. It's good to be basic. Does it make you happy to do things that are basic? Well, it turns out those things are basic because they're basically decent and everybody likes things that are basically acceptable. 
So, am I not basic? I say nay! We are all basic! Let us all rise up and appreciate that basic things are good, which is why so many people like them. You're on your own. I spent way too much of my life accepting that I was a weirdo. I mean, I am a weirdo. <laughs> Look at me. I, like, I'm a I'm... grown woman who only wears black. Like, most people grow out of that by the time they're 17. But, uh, like, for, like, literally, Jacob, even every single under pair of underwear I own is black. I'm goth down to my, like, the very soles of my shoes, by the way, which are also black! My socks aren't white, though, because I got them as a gift. Anyhow. Wait, I'm supposed to wear colors? So basic we could be used as soap. I think basic's great. It's okay to be basic. Don't fucking tease people about being basic. The same way they shouldn't tease you about being a weird nerd who likes video games. Ha! So don't tease people. Yeah, don't okay. be a piece of shit. <laughs> live and let live. Yeah, yes. <coughs> ah, I'm so basic I only use rocks as tools, says Tom Tilda. All right. Anyhow, let's. Uh, so we're pretty. Ba we're a pretty basic person, and that's okay. Sid previously headache. I recommend Professor Elementals. We're all in this together. Mm. Good choice. I enjoy Professor Elementals. Hey, I've scored fifty five hundred points. Nice. Keep talking to people, and your score will go up, up, up. I guess you could maybe not get points if you didn't talk to people. How am I this empathetic, though? That I sort of disagree <laughs> with. I'll see you soon. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level two? Oh, yeah. Sure. We're Iron Manning this shit. <laughs> <laughs> we are Iron Manning this visual novel. All right. So we did that. Uh, w. Livy has subscribed for 61 months. Loving Arcane Spirit so far. And Jake was always a welcome sight. Booster 6 subscribed for 33 months. And Liftiger subscribed for 24 months. Saying being basic plus coffee equals water and a salt. <coughs> sure. I just saved my game. So onward to level 2. There's no save scumming in love. I have save scum many games. <coughs> Brilliant. Oh, this is anime so hard. <clears throat> <clears throat> that was a chemistry joke. I'll consult Cameron. I I was not good at chemistry in high school. Just the future, yeah, 20XX. And you know what? Things are pretty okay. I've worked as a floor attendant at the Funplex for two weeks now. Hard work to be sure, but rewarding. In a spiritual sense, at least. I've helped Ma Naomi repair pinball games. I've had tea with Francine while she's reminisced about reminisced about the far out 1960Xs. I've evacuated gamers when the kitchen accidentally caught on fire. I've had numerous kids picking up nachos on my clothes. <laughs> I've scraped gum off any number of surfaces. I've chased down what, what turned out to be entirely too many spiders out of a single skee ball machine. <laughs> and okay, look, I know I'm not painting. This is a very rosy picture so far, but honestly, I'm happy. Sorry. I'm happy even amongst the chaos and the grossness. Uh, I'm happy, and all that matters, and that's all that matters, right? This is such a lovely way to experience this game. Right, you're happy. This is the best I've seen you in ages, Ari. Before you'd come home all drained and exhausted. Now, well, you're still tired, but a good tired. My roommate Juniper. She'd take it to stopping by during her lunch break whenever she'd get away from her office cubicle, cubicle long enough to do so. Still hard work, don't get me wrong, but overall, it's good work. I. Feel? I just feel good. Totally good and stuff. Yes! Good. <laughs> Agreed. Super good. Double plus good. Iris, we talked about you listening in on my conversations. What did I tell you about that? To pretend I wasn't eavesdropping even when I am? Exactly. You know, I'd be more upset about my creepy privacy invading digital over mistress, but I have to admit that Iris really pulled through for me. Even if she also ordered a three-month supply of pizza bagels on my behalf. When you have pizza on a bagel. So, Juniper, <laughs> how long do you have left on your break? Any time to squeeze in some pinball or something? I can spot you tokens. Oh. No can do. Our new assistant synergy manager arranged a team-building exercise. I have to, like, move colored bits of paper around or something and then exchange high fives. Oh, uh... Kit the Third said, E, I'm watching the VOD, and I wanted to pop in and say that I love this game so far, and seeing good non-binary and arrow representation still makes me choke up a bit from happiness. Thank you for being awesome to Two Flower and the whole development team. Assistant Synergy Manager, that sounds like a... 
Very vague job. Nah, it's actually entry level. Good pay and right on track to middle management. Pretty cushy, if a bit dull. Funny thing is that they asked me if I knew anybody who'd fit in before they started advertising for candidates, and I said, nope, who'd want to do that? When was this exactly? Oh, two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, right when I needed to find work, you told them you didn't know any candidates <clears throat> for a well-paying entry-level job. Oh, um, well, uh, but you wouldn't have liked being an assistant synergy manager, right? Not one bit. Juniper, please tell me that you told them no because I'd already taken this job by that point, not because you forgot. Hey, I didn't forget. I just, you know, didn't bother telling you about the open position that night. I mean, you'd already had so many jobs you hated. I knew you'd hate being an assistant synergy manager, so I didn't feel the need to tell you. And it all worked out, right? You just spent the last five minutes telling me how happy you are here. Not a lie. I, I was happy here, indeed. Also not a lie. Having packed pizza bagels for lunch, after having pizza bagels for breakfast, because we've barely had enough money to cover the rent this week, pooled together. Also not a lie, Gavin constantly hiding numbers from us, insisting things were fine, while dryly joking about perpetually being on the edge of crash and burn. Also not a lie, Every time someone in my family tries to chase after happiness instead of stability, we fell deeper and deeper into debt and misery. Ooh. Ari, say something. You're scaring me. I shouldn't feel angry. She stood by me for years, supporting me, trying to do what's best by me. Even if she wasn't always skilled at that sort of support. I shouldn't feel upset. I've been genuinely enjoying my time at the Funplex. It's restored my sense of hope that my days could be something to live through, not just endure. I have no right to be angry or upset at losing an opportunity to save for a more future, more stable future, right? How long have we been friends? Long time, ever since you were kids. So, I won't be angry or upset. Simple as that. Go with the flow. <clears throat> Go with the flow. Um, I'm a cup of water. <laughs> I did want to, uh, can I, is there a way to scroll up in chat? There was somebody that asked a question if I wanted to respond to. Yes. Is it that one? Okay. Yeah. I just, I got, go okay. over to the chat. Yes. And, and they're just scrolling up. Uh, spooky Spagooty. Did Jacob write the dialogue for the game? It seems like he knows it very well. Um, no, I was the casting director, uh, casting and voice director, uh, also <laughs> as... Uh, as a trained voice actor, I am uh, part of my training and part of my my skill and ability is to be able to cold read things and interpret them kind of as as you're reading it, and it has to say because sometimes I get scripts and it's like I'm re I am reading it for the first time, and you have to perform at the same time because sometimes you don't get to study the script. That's why. It's just a really uh, I just wanted to flex a little bit. <laughs> I decided I was done compromising, right? Done with settling, going with the flow. I'm gonna be the one to break the family curse. I chose this path of my own free will, even if I didn't have all the facts at the time. But if I'm gonna be honest, boundless confidence doesn't cover the simple fact that I chose to be vulnerable rather than safe. If the arcade closes, if anything else goes wrong, still, no need to jump all that on Juniper. It's okay, Juniper, you were right. I'd have hated that job, and things are great here. Oh, good. You were kind of freaking me out. Trust me, it's the right decision. You'd learn to loathe working at my office, like I do. I mean, sure, the pay is good, and you get solid health insurance, and paid vacation time, and they have a sweet coffee shop right in the lobby, and these really great chairs that support your lower back, like $1,000 chairs from Sweden crafted by master chairsmiths. Juniper. He said it's fine. Everything is fine. Honestly, I'm okay. I mean, I won't deny that job would have been a safer bet. I want to contribute my fair share to the apartment rent, you know. But what's done is done. I'd rather look forward than back. Right. Right. Uh, forget I said anything. Please forget I said anything. I'm sorry. She's so good. I should have told you. 
I shouldn't have held that back. But I still wouldn't have pushed you to take the job. It's totally horrible at my office. You'd have been miserable there, like me. Juniper, it's cool. You're right. I would have hated it. Okay, okay. Good. Why is this? She should get a different job now. She hates her job. <laughs> I've got a good feeling about all this. I think you're right where you need to be. Even if I was, um, kind of dumb about getting you here. Hey, I gotta get back to the office. Have a good lunch, okay? I can feel the distant rumble of a frozen box of pizza bagels taunting me from the recently repaired employee break room. Yeah, okay, and have a good... Rest of the hours of your day, yeah? You bet. I'm okay with this. Everything is fine. <laughs> right? Right! What I need now is a distraction. And frozen pizza bagels are most certainly not it. My pocket money is really slim, but I think I need to step out for some fresh air and treat myself to a better lunch than that. Mm. And hey, maybe some company too. Nice and distracting talking to someone about anything other than this. <laughs> Let's see, who's available? Uh, let's go talk to Ashley. It's not often that both floor tenants can go on a break at the same time. I should take advantage of that and see if Ashley wants to grab some chow. Oh my god! What is this shirt a reference to? Or if it's uh, just... Probably every anime. Yeah, it might just look super familiar. Uh, it look uh, to to my mind, it looks like um. Oh my god, uh, the princess with the sword, brain. Uh, Utena. Uh, Utena. That's it. Yes. The shirt is the anti Kathleen. Oh, jeez, I keep doing that. Uh, oh. Let's see. It looks like a blonde uh, Tugakuri from Utena. Yeah. His shirt is even exploding off. On the fun side, I will not be lunching with Pinky the Funplex Flamingo. She's in her civvies today. Oh, hi! Hey, hey, oh, I'm sorry, did you want to? I took no, Ashley he... last time. I can take her again if you want. Please. Cool. Hey, hey, Arif, what's up? Kitchen on fire again? Not yet, and to avoid that happening again, I suggest having lunch somewhere else. Holy crap, her belt buckle is the Flamingo. That's amazing. You know, I was just about to suggest that. Both not burning down the kitchen and going out for a bite. Sounds great! Maybe taking a breather and stepping outside these walls will help take my mind off of everything that's happened this morning. And Ashley always has a story to get lost in. Maybe I could get some pointers. Oh, hey, I know where we could go. You haven't been to the whole story yet, have you? Mm, no, not yet. I've been existing off all these pizza bagels. I do love me some pizza bagels, especially the sausage ones. Hmm. I wonder how they make all those tiny little sausages fit on those bite-sized morsels. Like, is it on a conveyor belt with lots of sharp blades? Chopping down at insane speeds? You wouldn't want to be caught under that, no way. Focus, Ashley. Whole story. Oh, yeah, it's an adorable little bookstore that also sells coffee and donuts. Get it? Whole? Story? What? <laughs> Not a fan of puns, I take it. Nevertheless, I got a hankering for some mini donuts. Let's go. Why is everything we eat small and round? Mini donuts, pizza bagels. <laughs> I can sell. I I feel like my character that's... can ingest something that's more than an inch in diameter. <laughs> Despite coming to this little strip mall for two weeks, I haven't actually visited our neighbors. Are you okay, Jacob? I, like a thousand dirty jokes just all sprung to mind and got uh, crammed on the way out of my brain. Anyway. Unlike the pizza bagels, which go in and out as, with surprising alacrity. Yes. Yes, indeed. Mm. You haven't mm. had a poop until you've had a pizza bagel poop. <sighs> <laughs> uh, uh, drink your tea, Jacob. Just, oh, no, I'm out. Uh-oh. Oh, that's all right. We switched to water Mostly I did whatever I needed doing. Took order orders from Gavin, lent a hand to Ashley and Naomi. Things like that. Whatever the job happened to call for. No more, no less. I couldn't say I'd been a part of any community outside the circle of my coworkers. Whereas the others visited the whole story frequently. 
Ashley leads the way into a shop that sells that spells strangely of dusty old books and sugary sweetness. <coughs> hmm. I don't think I've ever been in a little independent bookstore. Or a bookstore at all, for that matter. It's 20XX. Who buys books at a, in brick-and-mortar stores anywhere? Anymore. But despite the subdued atmosphere compared to the arcade, there are customers present and accounted for. Sipping coffee, reading old tomes, and yes... Munching donuts. Ashley secures a tiny table for us before directing me to the bar. Hang on, what's up with this menu? It's, it's organized by the Dewey Decimal System? I'll have the Judy Bloom. It's a bunch of mini donuts. And hey, my treat, okay? I mumble out of thanks, trying not to make a big deal out of it. Cash is tight and boutique cafe pastries wouldn't help my situation much. Ah, they're so cute. A pair of middle-aged guys wait to take my order. If I had to guess which one Graham is playing, mm. I would guess it would be the larger one. That is correct. Yes. Graham has the booming voice of a tall man. Yes. Because he is a tall man. People are very excited. And this guy's even got a goatee, just like you. I... I didn't... When I was doing the casting and, and listening to everybody, like, I did... There was... There were a lot of people that, like, I got their headshots or got to see what they looked like after I had cast their voice, and a lot of them matched up, and it was amazing. Mm. It worked out super, super well. Uh, hey, I'd like, uh... <clears throat> uh, one super... <laughs> yeah, I mean... I've done that before at oh. restaurants. I'm like, I don't know. It surprised me, me. yeah. <laughs> like, fuck, fuck me up. And what will we be having today? The specials are... No, 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 no. Fuck me up. Very good, very good. Yes. <laughs> hey, what's good? What's your favorite order from the menu? One Terry Pratchett coming up. A jam pastry with clatchy and coffee. Aww. That, I can't unhear my husband. I mean, I just had him. I didn't have him do anything fancy. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can't unhear him. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, that's the, the... I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at Graham. Who's currently holding Penelope, looking sadly out at the snow? Uh. <laughs> a second fellow puts together my order and also drops a small paperback book onto the tray featuring a many-legged wooden travel trunk on the cover. Oh my god, that's amazing. Huh. A literally literary lunch. With alliteration, apparently. Say, you work at the Funplex, don't you? Ah! That's just Jacob. <laughs> I didn't do a fancy voice either. Ah. <laughs> right. We've seen you walk past our doors every morning and evening. Like clockwork, tick tock. Right. Sorry, I should have introduced myself. Floor attendant Ari Cater at your service. I'm your inside person for tokens and tickets. Oh, we are lousy at video games. Totally lousy. But Francine's just a peach, isn't she? Sweetest dame you'll ever meet. Regardless, welcome to the whole story. I'm Ben. I'm Matt. No relation to the actors. Although they're cuties and so are we. Oh, stop. Stop being cute? Never. And apparently the sugar is available in forms other than round and holy. <sighs> anyway, don't let us stop you from having fun on your little date. Wouldn't dream of it. It's not a date. Just friends then? Friendly friends on a play date? Maybe the real date was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> I'd say the real friends were the friends we made along the way. What Christ. if the way was also the real friends who were the <laughs> real friends we made along the way? You two are insufferable. <laughs> okay, now you're just being silly. And how? Oh anyway. my god. You have, a, you have a group photo. <laughs> Is it always like this? <laughs> it's the this only... The, okay, you look to the definition of a lot in the dictionary, and first it says that's not a word, it's two words, a lot. And it's just a picture of these two. Yeah. Is the second one. Yeah. One, stop that. It's two words. And then two is just these two <laughs> together under a lot. So the reason uh, uh, I, because Graham, uh, like, you know, he was the best fit for the role, like, after after the whole audition process. Um, if, if you go and watch the video, that's actually us filming this. And I wanted us, because we were playing a gay couple and playing off of each other and there was such banter, I wanted to make sure that we were in the same place at the same time mm. so that we could, like, back and forth banter off of each other. And apparently, Two Flower told me from a technical standpoint, it was tricky to get 
it because it's usually one line, one line, one line, one oh, line. Oh yeah. So he did some technical magic to actually get it so that it could be like. Bip, 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 bip. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So the like the end of the banter like as you're hearing it, this is what it was in real time. There's no editing or anything like that. Oh, we did you're it just over guys and just over right again on top until, of each yep, other. Absolutely. Yep. Next order, please. Wow. I unfortunately think my favorite part of doing that is near the end of the game. Oh, yeah. Well, so we won't but see it. I'm but... not gonna, I don't wanna. Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. And that's my first time hearing it in the game and seeing it in the game, and it, it's, this is fucking amazing. Oh, this is so good. <coughs> ah, Team Beard Fire. There. The pair waves the next customer in as I return to Ashley's table with our orders on a nicely decorated wooden tray. Oh, wow! The mini donuts are so cute. Oh my god, a tiny donut in her hands like a little chipmunk holding an acorn. <laughs> <laughs> she looks down at the tiny pastry and her eyes sparkle before she takes a bite. Closing her eyes, the corners of her mouth curl into a wide smile. Um. <laughs> oh. Ari, it's so yummy, I can eat these all day. I wish I could have Ashley's enthusiasm about eating food. Same old pizza bagels, day after days, dulling out my palate. Ashley's favorite face changes from just pure delight, from pure delight to concern. Hey, Ari, is everything okay? You weren't your normal self today. You seem a little off. Oh, it's just been an interesting morning. Kind of hard to wrap my head around everything. Hey, I know how those days go. Even I feel lost and confused sometimes. There are days when it's especially rough. Hmm, how do I explain this? I know. I know it seems totally unlike me, but honestly, deep down I'm scared. I feel like I don't really know who I am. Every time I look at myself in the mirror, I don't know who this person is, who is staring back at me. This is an intense conversation to have on a coffee break. Mm. I mean, in my heart of hearts, I know I am Ashley Wolf, but that's all. What makes up Ashley Wolf? Who am I? Who am I really? That's what I'm searching for. Uh, that took an unusually serious tone compared to Ashley's usually chipper attitude. Ashley, have you been smoking a lot of weed late at night and just like, you know, looking in a mirror and being like, whoa. <laughs> I certainly can't say I entirely get what she means about not knowing who she is. Well, no, I kind of get it, considering I don't know what I want from life. What you want and who you are are often linked ideas, right? But... Ashley looks so forlorn, I can't just sit by and say nothing. I won't let the silence drown her out. Hmm. I wonder if Ashley uses cosplay as a way to help explain her world. She discovers she sh things she couldn't obtain without it. Cosplay helps you find what you're looking for, right? Ashley looks shocked and slightly embarrassed. Whoa, how'd you guess? Are you psychic? You have to tell me if you're psychic. Those are the psychic rules. No, no, it just makes sense, I guess. We all have our masks, do we not? Yeah, we do. When I reflect on my life, I really do love cosplay, and I love the rush it brings. I get to be whoever I want, whatever I want. I can be a starship captain, an elf, a giant pink flamingo mascot, even. <clears throat> I don't have to worry about Ashley. I can focus on being someone else. I feel awkward in my own skin. When I'm in costume, I feel like I'm at my fullest potential. I feel comfortable. But I think cosplay has really helped me understand some things about myself that I couldn't see before I started doing this. I just want to be able to love the person I am when I find them. Knowing you, I think you'll do just fine there. If you can smile for the kitties through a pink flamingo mask, you can smile for yourself. Yeah, the, the, this 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 hits the actor feels real hard because I feel like when I'm doing a character or performing or something, I'm much more 
I feel more real than when I'm just like being myself. Because myself, like I have an incredibly flat tone and dry sense of humor and everything like that. But when I'm a character, I feel like I can embody what a human does more. <laughs> yeah, this is, oh my god, this is good. Mm. I hope so. I really do. Ashley looks off again longingly for a second before snapping back to attention. Oh my, I've just talked your ear right off. Beep beep. Beep beep. Lunch time is over, Ari. Ugh, right on time. Hey, thanks for listening, Ari. I mean it. And, you know, if you ever want to talk about your problems, I'm here. I mean, I'm here at the Funplex. Yeah. But, like, I'm here for you, too? Also, temporarily? Yeah, that that's what friends are for. And I totally know I might be overstepping my bounds here, but... I feel like lately you're just going through the motions at the fun place. I've been there for two weeks! Huh? No, no, things are great with me in the fun flex. You punch in and punch out right on time, sure. Hmm. But from what I've seen, Ari, you have so, so much potential. The flame burns deep inside. You just gotta dig down and bring out that light, you know? You'll do great things, I just know it. And I've totally delayed you long enough. We should get back before back to Gavin before he notices we're gone. Time for the afternoon shift. That's usually when things heat up after the quiet mornings. More kids coming in after school, more pro gamers rolling in with crews. I'm headed back to my desk ready to take care of what needs taken care of when I'm intercepted en route. Ari, Ashley, you're both back. Good, I was hoping to catch you before we left. Ooh, what's up? Hamza's up. Yes! Okay. He is, huh? Okay. Ashley, I'll bring the van around shortly. Ari, you'll be flying solo today. Hang, hang on, what, what, what's happening exactly? Who's Hamza? Uh, Hamza's a game finder and auctioneer, and gives next to no notice of when a new block of games will be going under the gavel, so we need to move. Ashley, Naomi, Francine, and I will be going to his auction for the rest of the afternoon while you run the fun play. Ah, by myself? Uh, my first instinct is to nod and go along with it. Gavin's the love. I don't know why I'm saying that. That's your thing. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's I got, okay. I got excited. Some, sometimes you sometimes just, you know, just get so into the game. My first instinct is to nod and go along with it, because Gavin's the law around these parts. But, like, Ashley's words are, words are still dangling away in my mind. Doing what needs doing is great and all, but maybe I need to step up a bit more. Plus, the idea of being trapped in here during our heaviest hours with no support was hardly appealing. Oh. I. <laughs> maybe, maybe appeal to, to Gavin's, like, hey, I'm new. This isn't the smartest thing you've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me? Seriously? Did we learn nothing from the great kitchen fire incident of 20XX that Ari exudes an aura of perpetual bad luck? Um. That cruddy old microwave exploding had nothing to do with your pizza rolls. Pizza bagels! Whatever. Hey, hang on. I get a say in this too, right? As a fellow floor attendant. I feel like such a third wheel at those auctions anyway. Let Ari be the third wheel and let me handle the floor. I'll be the finest third wheel you've ever met. Trust me. Sick. I did not want to run this arcade by myself. I just want to do more things that I've been doing. Different things. New things. Show some initiative, like... I suppose it wouldn't change much to bring Ari instead. But no costume time today, Ashley. I need non-plush fingers on duty in case of ticket jams. Pinky can stay in storage for the afternoon. I'm just happy to be helping folks out one way or another. I need to go to the van. I need to go get the van. Wait out front, please. We'll probably be closed by the time you get back, so I'll see you in the morning. Floor attendant Ashley, away! Leaving me wait outside with my two traveling companions. Not much time to chat, however, as Gavin pulls his van in a rental trailer around. Oh my, how exciting. I rarely go on adventures these days. It's just a quick trip, ma'am. 
And each rep is an adventure if you make it one. Shall we? I hope I'm just gonna this right soon. And the four of us pile in and it's off to the highway. Do we get to Hamza? We do get to Hamza. Oh my gosh. Oh look man, at that. that is so fucking good! Wow. Oh, and I like how it looks like the Scooby Doo van. Yeah. yeah. Gavin, consulting a driving map on his phone, leads us out of the city via, via a series of weird turns and back roads. But trust me, this will save time in the long run. Where's Hamza set up this time? On site at some abandoned state, uh, just outside town. It's about to be torn down, but they found a trove of arcade games in the basement. Cool! So exciting! I love arcade raids! Arcade auctions. Raids! Auctions. Uh, you guys got an arcade to English dictionary I could borrow? Francine, without looking up from her knitting answers. A raid is when a bunch of collectors get together and rescue games before they can be junked by their original owner. An auction is when someone sells off their arcade games one at a time to a crowd of active bidders. So, which is this? A raid or an auction? It's both, dearie. Hamza, that sweet boy, buys off private collections before they can be thrown away. He rescues them from that terrible fate and then auctions off his finds. Sort of. Okay, now I'm fuzzy on the sort of part. I'm the, I'm the newbie here, remember? Well, okay. So Hamza obviously auctions off uh, obviously auctions off games for cash money, but he's a very whimsical kind of guy. Once I saw him trade off a vintage burger time in exchange for someone's super secret chili recipe passed down through generations of family. Uh. In other words, he's just on the edge of being a loon. Sick. This would be a lot simpler if it was just a raid. We can pay up front, we declare what games we want, and cart them away. Instead, he ambushes us with his impromptu auctions and makes us come down there to entertain his whims. Wonderful. I think it's sweet. He wants to make sure the games go to good homes, to people who really want them, even if they can't pay. And really, we should be honored we got an invitation. He's trying to cut out the big franchise arcade like Deco's Palace and help the little guys like us. Um... It's inefficient and relies entirely on keeping on Hamza's good side. Huh. Uh, so he only invites a select hand-picked group to his auctions. How did you end up in that select hand-picked group? Oh, that would be my doing, dearie. He likes to visit the local arcades whenever he's in town, and as I like to get to know everybody who walks in our doors, I approached him. I suppose we achieved a certain rapport, considering that we've had three invitations so far. Got some rather lovely games, too, including Moopy. We need to temper our expectations a little, I suspect. I think not. We don't have room to add many more games, especially relics like Hamza usually deals in. Hmm. What about the offside storage unit? We can just rotate games in and out more often. Nearly full to burst, and not cheap for us to rent on a monthly basis. I'm not saying we have to go home empty-handed. Certainly a few holes in our roster we can fill, should we find an excellent deal and beat the other bidders. Oh, we're gonna get something ridiculous. But consider this, above anything else, a way to maintain relations with Hamza, even if we don't end up bidding. Aww. No. Now, now, Naomi, Gavin knows the numbers. I'm in favor of making our little fun plaques more and more fun, but floor space is finite. And Gavin, remember, if we find some darling little game Naomi would lavish adoration upon, we can always retire an older game. Life, my young friends, is a series of trade-offs. Well, isn't it better to, you know, not just settle and compromise all the mm. time? Well, now. There are trade-offs, and there are trade-offs. Oh. It's silly to say that you should never compromise. As silly as it is to say you should always compromise. It's what you compromise that defines who you are. Oh. You're all so young yet. You've time to make mistakes in learning what trade you need to make. 
Unless you don't make rent on your apartment, or your stomach's growling. I'd burn a house down for any one of my cast members. Iris and Juniper have pushed me to stop settling for less out of life, to stand up for myself and my happiness. And I've done just that, without regret. So, everything should be fine now, right? Right? <laughs> New default topic diversion! The weather! At least it's a nice day for an outing, right? <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Wonderful. Glad I packed plastic bags to wrap cabinets in just in case. Oh, Gavin, I love him. That's our Gavin. Always thinking ahead. Trying to protect your investments, huh? From Hamza's invitation, it seems this arcade was largely abandoned and left to rot. I'd rather not add water damage to the ailments the games are already suffering. It's so sad when we come across a wonderful game that's just ruined beyond repair. Most collectors show their collections a lot of love, but others just don't care. You find old games and bonds, expose the elements, and falling apart. I suppose this is one thing we can easily agree on. It's important to take care of your game. I feel like if we end up with Gavin, we live a modest and totally reasonable life. Like it's the kind of life where it's like you live in a you live in an apartment that's like you rent or buy a place that's like on the lower end of your affordability scale, and you live comfortably and save your money. How nice! I can't say. Or maybe you convince him to throw chaos to the wind, liquidate his RRSPs. <laughs> that's your <laughs> registered retirement savings plan for non-Canadians. Uh, I have no comment. I like Gavin. Why? Why say for the future, Gavin, when we could be in Aruba today? Who knows? Hmm. For the resale value, you mean. A broken game's no fun to play with, and it's a shame to see a classic in terrible condition. Consider pinball. Pinball games are very prone to break games, particularly older ones. To experience them in their glory, you need to show them care. Even beyond a busted game earning no quarters, it feels like a waste to allow an enjoyable game like uh, to allow an enjoyable game like Valor, a waste of true potential. Oh, good. <coughs> Glad to see these two getting along better, even if Naomi kept preemptively attacking him along the way there. With the rain pounding down on the van roof, conversation gets a bit difficult. Gradually, everyone resumes fiddling about with, what they're, with their phones, knitting, or driving, leaving me to wonder exactly where is this auction and or raid happening anyway? We've been driving for some time. The city's far behind. What would a massive trove of arcade games be doing this far with sticks? Maybe it's some closed down roller rink or an old bowling alley or. <laughs> or maybe it's a creepy old house that's likely haunted by exactly 87,194 ghosts. Ah, yes, the classic cater luck and play. So majestically awful. Gavin pulls up alongside any other number of vans and trucks. We're here a little late, it seems. Before we continue, I need to pee. Okay, you I'm go. I'm very excited. You tinkle. Okay. I'm going to read the subs. All right. Just accept the username. Subscribe for eight months. Lacking sanity. Subscribe for fifty-one months. Daniel Lewis eighty-four. Subscribe for nineteen months. Oh, Audisa. Subscribe for seven months. This game makes me so happy that I could gronk. Thank you so much. My name is E. Subscribe for forty-seven months. Saying sorry, I was late to the stream. I was putting my cat in a flannel shirt. Delightful. Grimpo ninety-six. Just subscribe. Welcome to our uh, welcome to our community, Grimpo. Uh, my mom's Amazon Prime, subscribe for 13 months. Contingent Cat, subscribe for 19 months, saying thanks for everything you do. Vlanox, subscribe for 13 months. And I, Smart Man one subscribe for 53 months, saying I wish Dandy Geek were here for the auction. Oh my gosh, yes, Ben would love this. So hey, chat, let's wrap. It's just you and me. I like Francine. She seems very cool. She seems like an awesome old lady. Uh, I wish to become an awesome old lady. Although I've decided that I that uh, I am done having terrible self-esteem because that's what my brain tells me to do, and I realize that I'm the boss of my own fucking brain. So I was like, no, I'm cool. I'm a rad lady. I'm awesome. If you see me, I own a leather jacket. So I'm trying to be like, no, I'm awesome. And it's uh, it's, it's working a little bit. So 
so I don't know. Grandpa 96. How how much do you feel your uh, how how much do you feel you relate to your character's non option dialogue? I feel like I have uh, I feel like I have enough choices that I could relate to the optional dialogue. Uh, I am sort of like a not like emotionally engaging person, so like the basic option actually seems to suit me quite well. Uh, uh, we ought to turn this whole abandoned house into a museum for old games to make Naomi happy. That sounds expensive. Uh, hell straight. I am hella straight. Thank you for noticing. Uh, TXC2, I've looked awful in a leather jacket. Uh, it really sort of depends on what style of leather jacket it is. Not every style of jacket looks works well for everyone. Hey, Jacob, can you get me a glass of water, actually, since you're already up? And for... Huh. Otisa. Unfortunately, I still have some colored t-shirts and everything I own is black. Not everything I own is black. I have some gray shirts and some purple shirts and some, like, dark blue shirts and stuff. Like, no, like, pastels or anything. Uh, sometimes that can offset the black. My parents bought me a leather jacket of style, but I hated it. Oh, no. I may never buy a leather jacket again. Oh. Uh, that's, that's too bad. Here you go. Oh, uh, that's... I'm just wait, is it I'm cold? Kidding. What's that? Is it I... cold, or is it just out of the tap? You said you, said you drink tap water. So yes. Yes. Okay, but it's not cold tap water, is it? It's just whatever. I use the cold faucet. I don't know okay. what you need. Uh, I am a monster who drinks room temperature water, so as long yes, as it's not icy cold. Perfect! This, can they give it to me? Oh, I got this as a gag. Oh. I actually got you a real thing of water. But hydration's important, so... Yeah, I'm gonna let that warm up a bit, because... Because it's not the ambient temperature of the room. I hate being cold. And cold water makes you cold from the inside. Yes, it does. I, I hate that. <sighs> hey, Tear and Dragon. Oh, we've got a few, uh, a couple Oop. more subs. The, uh, them Mad Doll Maker subscribed for 15 months. Dismally Oriented subscribed for 4 months. Glad to spend Tuesday evening with his rad lady and rad lad. Keep being awesome, y'all. Hey, and hey. Tear and Dragon subscribed for 39 months saying, Stay warm in your snow, Lur. You can clear all yep, of those yep. subs. Cold water is only for hot days. Kathleen, I feel the same. Uh, I love that. When it's warm, I'm frequently warm. I am never. And Legion of Flashes, yes, this is the game that Graham worked on. We heard his voice earlier. Oh, lots of people weighing in on team room temperature water filth beasts. <laughs> yes, I am also room temperature water. But people look at me like I'm a fucking monster when I say that I have some room temperature water. Well, that's insane. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Mmm. To maintaining a constant body temperature inside and out. Good grief. Oh, wait, that's you. Mmm. Mm. Oh. oh boy. Good grief. Is this really the auction site? No. Tryon says, oh, a Crunchyroll seems like it would be awesome for the game. Did, does Crunchyroll review games? Yes. Oh, well. It, yes, Crunchyroll reviewed this one. Oh, did they? Yes, indeed. I didn't know that. Yes. I haven't been on the internet much today. I've been working. Yeah. Yep. I've been making content for the internet. No, we have, uh, um, we have a lot of. Uh, this game had a lot of really good reviews. So, like, we were doing um, press for... I was at the Yisbury booth, and mm. we were doing press for Y2K, and I could see Arcade Spirits. Um, so, like, every, I'm not saying I'm responsible for this at all, but, like, sometimes I'd be like, okay, have you checked out Arcade Spirits? It's pretty cool. Yeah, they, I, Arcade Spirits got a lot of really good press. I think some of it's collected... I think Two Flyers has been kind of collecting it. I don't know if it's on the website, but Two Flyers has been collecting it. It's, it's been doing very well so far. I mean, good? Yes, yes. Appropriate? Hey, good. Yes. I'd be suspicious if somebody was like, oh, the game's okay. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with it? Have you played any other dating game? <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Anyhow, yes, all the reviews are on arcadespirits.com. And Wibble Squeak subscribe for eight months, and Axie subscribe for two months, saying it's nice to be finally financially stable enough to support my favorite people. Thank Yay. you very much. We really appreciate it. And even uh, since it's only two months of subscription, all of those months before where you were not subscribed, but you were still participating and a member of our community and watching 
that is also so valuable to us. Thank you so much for subscribing on Twitch. We do genuinely appreciate it. It does help pay us and like keep stuff happening. But we love you even just by being part of our community. It's not never a requirement to give us money. We appreciate it. So thank you. I, know, I always feel, I always want people to feel like they're valuable to us even if like they're not financially contributing to of course. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why you're explaining yourself to me. <laughs> I mean yeah. I mean that that seems you gotta appreciate your audience. Time and attention yeah. and especially financial support is not anything it, it's always to be honored. I don't like people that don't appreciate what they have, where they are, or who supports them. Mm. That's insane. Right. Anyway, I let's, believe... Let's go, let's go meet Hamza. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. Creepy, definitely creepy. At least eight on the creep of eating. An old home has character, I feel. Let's not judge it by the exterior, shall we? With all speed, the group hurries inside to get away from the weather. <laughs> Whoa. A large group has already gathered in the foyer of the crumbling estate, but... Run rushes forward to greet us in a blur as the others pay little mind. Greetings, friends. <laughs> okay. All right. <sighs> okay, I love Hamza. So Hamza is, um, uh, this is this person's uh, voice role. He's actually a very accomplished voice director and a audio uh, director. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked him to audition because we were trying to do representative casting. And he uh, he's of Indian descent and... Uh, so I, I asked him if he could submit something, and he was like, okay, I'll do my best, and did amazingly. Uh, he is the sound designer for um, uh, uh, Hyperlight Drifter oh. and a whole bunch of other stuff. His name is Akash the Car. He is amazing. He did such a great job with this game. He was so freaking nervous and so, like, I, but he did such a, a great freaking job and threw himself into it. Um, we did some acting lessons and acting training before that to like get him ready, but I wanted his voice and his enthusiasm. He's also one of my vampire players for uh, my Vampire the Masquerade game uh, oh. set in Seattle of my two. Uh, he is amazing. He did such a great job, and um, I, I work with him. He's, he's one of, like, he teaches me a lot about certain things and, and, and mentors me, and I mentor him. Uh, as far as voice direction and stuff goes, so and he he just friggin' rocked it. He just rocked it. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, hold on. Can you scroll off the sure, chat? Sure, sure. Oh, of course, of <coughs> course. Uh, Where are we going? Uh, let's keep going just a yep. little bit more. Uh, let's see. So uh, a little bit more. Yep. Somebody was like, Two flower, you should repeat that because Kathleen, uh, uh, Kathleen will appreciate it." It's our grand aunt Euphemia's home. Yes! Nice. That's amazing. Poor Euphemia. Now that she's died, <laughs> her home has fallen into disrepair. Oh. Hamza looks like he's a certified. It looks like, can I revise my previous thing? Like, the first dictionary definition of the word a lot is this is not a word. It's two words. <laughs> You uh, the second one is, lot. is 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 the, is 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 the whole story, and then the third one might just be this picture. Is, is this man a lot? He's a lot. Oh, I'm so a sad. A lot. I I love I love characters that are a lot because it allows me to interact with people that would make me nervous in real life. This person would probably make a lot of people nervous in real life. Look how bold his font is. And I love them. Yep. Hamza welcomes our friends from the Funplex. Welcome, welcome. Gavin, stalwart as ever. Naomi, love what you've done with your hair. Miss Francine, a beauty surpassed only by your wisdom. Pro tip, Gavin's route through this episode has the most Hamza. Really? Two flowers said. Oh. I'm... I mean, you you make your choice. I'm, I will I will throw my vote in for most Hamza. Oh wow! But that's I love I fucking love this character, and I love what Akash did with it. Oh, oh! I'm so proud of him. Fresh. And a new player, it seems. Who might you be? Uh, our Ari Cater. I see. Greetings to you and yours. I am known as Hamza. Seeker of antiquity, finder of things lost, player of games. And welcome to, well, not my home, 
but a place where Hamza shall provide hospitality regardless. Thank you for your invitation, Mr. Hamza. I understand that you only invite a select few, and the uh, Funplex is proud to accept your summoning. <laughs> you want to oh, I'm Hamza? sorry, yes. Indeed, I am very careful who I allow to my events. These machines deserve owners who will respect and appreciate them. Hamza will expect no accept nothing less. Alas, I have not a moment to enjoy your fun company, Arikaver. Perhaps later, but for now, it is time. Clapping twice for attention. My goodness. Hamza rallies the small crowd in the room to begin the proceedings. Friends, companions, longtime allies of the no allies of the noble art of the arcade. Welcome, welcome to Donna Wood. Its story begins nearly thirty years ago when legendary pop musician Donna Michaels, singer of such hits as Thrilling and Mama Don't Mope, did a stately pleasure. Uh, did a stately pleasure so, dome decree. A pleasure dome? Yes, did a stately ple pleasure dome decree. Here, the reclusive idol crafted a private amusement park, a petting zoo, and an arcade. Alas, she could only enjoy this paradise for a short ten years before her tragic death. Needless to say, the estate has fallen on hard times ever since. In this year, it shall be torn down to make way for condominiums. But not before we have our say. Friends, those games that Donna Michaels cherished still lurk one floor below, ready to be rescued from such a terrible fate. It is our moral imperative to do so. I have paid the estate owners a princely sum for the entire lot. Now, Hamza parcels them out to you. By all means, browse the collection. See which pieces sing out to you. On the far table, you shall find refreshments, grapes, sparkling wine, and delicacies from my travels. Mingle, cavort, and we shall begin the auction in one hour's time. This is rad as hell. Oh, I love him so much. Indeed, a lavishly arranged table that probably cost more than any single arcade game to put together is descended upon by the invitees soon after. I feel like I'm attending some ancient Roman celebration of debauchery and gluttony, not an arcade raid or an arcade auction or whatever. <laughs> Donna Michaels? I knew it! I should have recognized Donna Wood when we pulled in, but it was raining too hard. Who? You've never heard of Donna Michaels? She was the hottest musical act of 1980X. Naomi, I was born in 1990, 1990, 1990X. Oh, I'm totally plugging my phone into the stereo so we can blast. Girls just want to play games all the way home. But first, I'm going to go check out the cabinets in her arcade. I'm not really into mingling. Later! She dashes off with all speed, heading for the stairs leading below. Hmm. Hmm. Suppose I should network a bit. Hamza's events always draw an interesting crowd of rival arcade owners. Heading for the foodstuffs, Gaffin arranges himself a plate so he has an excuse to hang around and eavesdrop on the other collectors. Leaving me to do... stuff. <laughs> that was a great reading. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that was great. That was awesome. Now I see why Ashley was bored at these events. Gavin schmoozes, Naomi analyzes finds, and Francine's already napping in a chair. I don't have nothing to do. But we're at an abandoned mansion! Look around! <laughs> Get up in there! When in doubt, find someone who knows what they're doing and stick to them like glue. I'm not really interested in the arcade version of Game of Thrones going up there. On a, up on there. Gavin can handle those guys. Me, I want to see this legendary arcade hums that was talking up. So we head downstairs to join Naomi. Whoa. Is this a private collection or a full-fledged arcade? I was expecting a handful of games at a pool table or something, but this... This is easily three times larger than the Funplex itself. Even coated in dust and disrepair, it's awe-inspiring. And it's also hard to find anyone in this maze of tightly packed games. Invitees are browsing the available stock to decide what's worth bidding on, making it, as, making it crowded as well. 
But eventually, I locate Naomi practically cuddling a narrow-looking TMNT machine. Oh! Ari, look, look! A two-player variant of TMNT! These were only released in the Oceana region. Such a rare find! I'm gonna believe that's absolutely true. Wait, wasn't that game originally four-player? Why would anybody want a version with only two joysticks? Well, because... Because I'm... I mean, it's rare! It, it's a find! And it's less fun. Not the point! Anyway, it's hard to find one of those... One of these. Two-player or four-player. I'd love to have it for the arcade. I'd love to have that, and this one, and this one, and... Oh, if only I could take all these home with me! I mean... Some have water damage, other likely have busted CRTs and controls. They all need work, but... I recall the... Uh, I recall the game she was working on when I first met her. Extensive repairs needed just to make it playable. So, not only would you have to bid and win the game, you'd have to have... But you'd have hours of work and plenty of spare parts to purchase ahead of you. I know! Isn't it great? Okay, is there a nice way to say this? Naomi, before you get ahead of yourself, stop and think. It's a question of resources above all else. Buying the game, obtaining parts, paying you per hour to repair it. I just don't think the Funplex could support many more of these rescue crews. Ugh. Ugh. You oh. sound just like Gavin. I'd make the time. I, I, I'd work for free. Oh, honey, don't do that. No. I'd do whatever it takes to give these games the care and love they deserve. Don't work for free. Even if you love your job. I... It's a job. Yeah. I love Vampire the Masquerade, and if they were like, hey, do you want to write in this book for free, I'd still say no, and it would break my heart, it would break everything inside of me, but I would still say no, because I value myself more than I love, more than I value the things that I love. Yeah, also, 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 if you do have vacation days at work, take them all, every one of them, every single year. Yep, all of them. Every yep. single minute. Yep, absolutely. <sighs> Anyhow, hmm. It's admirable that you want to devote so much of your time to yourself to the games, but the games we do have need your love, too. Even you have your limits. You have to accept that reality. Naomi sighs, frustration building. It's not fair. I know... I mean, I'm not dense. I know there's only so much we can realistically do. So many projects I can actually take on. But I, I wish I could do more. I wish we could do more. Oh. The Funplex has never really been a success. Even before I came on board, it was always struggling to stay afloat. I joined it because so few arcades still have the games I love. But I can't turn our situation around, can I? No matter how hard I try, this was my first job. Part of me is hoping it'll be my last job, too. That I can happily spend all my days tinkering with these wonderful games. Every kid says they want to be a fireman or an astronaut or a robot cop or something but nobody actually ends up doing that except me i wanted to fix up arcade games and that's what i'm doing it's all i ever wanted to do so when i see all these old broken games i just want to show them the love i can give i could be happy working on them for the rest of my life wow that's dedication and really, you went straight from school to an arcade job? I mean, I've meandered from job to job, never really sure what I wanted. That's normal, right? Yeah! Oh, definitely. I'm the oddball here. It's funny, I followed my heart and found just what I wanted, what I needed, and now, well... Now I'm scared someday it'll all come to an end. The Funplex will close. And if the Funplex goes under... I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. All I ever wanted was to work in an arcade. And I'm literally living my dream. Mm. Fuck, Stephanie Shea is so good. Fuck, she's so good, it makes me mad. <sighs> Naomi, I have these thoughts all the time. It's just like, oh, I, I literally, I'm a, I'm a, I, I do everything I've ever wanted. I make people laugh for a living. Oh God, what if I lose my job? I'll have to go back to working in an office. I have years of be I have years of experience doing what I love that makes me unsuitable for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, now I feel bad for bringing down her day. Hey, hey, look, y you never know, right? Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll find a new game down here that brings in thundering herds of players. Right? It's a slim hope and we both know it, but Naomi clings to it immediately, eagerly. <coughs> I made my choice. Now I need to make that choice work. Hmm. We just need to find the right game. Something nobody's played in a long time. Something that'll tug at the nostalgia strings. It's difficult finding the right balance, especially in the year 20XX. A lot of these games are on life support. Borrowed time. But they could be repaired, right? Oh, well, yeah, for now. I got distracted by chat. That's okay. But CRTs, the monitors that power these old games, before LCDs and now 3D flats started replacing them, they're in short supply. Nobody makes them anymore. I mean, who buys a tube-based TV anymore? Nobody. It's all high definition and that dumb 3D projection tech, which looks awful. Nobody appreciates a good CRT anymore. Aren't high-def displays way cheaper, though? I've seen some old games running them in other arcades. They're wrong is what they are. These games weren't designed for pixel-perfect flat panels. They're designed for fuzzy tubes. The picture looks weird on LCD. Even two weeks in, I'm still fuzzy myself on a lot of this stuff. But I grew up in the internet age. I'm silicon literate. I got opinions. So it's a problem of having spare parts on hand long term. Short of building our own factory for cranking out cheap TV tubes, you're, there's a temporary fix. Buy some cheap common games and use them as organ donors. Ugh. And ruin a classic? Oh, come on. Cheap and common, Naomi. Not some rare find, but one that's still readily available. We can even keep the cabinet itself so it could be restored later if need be. Point is, mixing and matching the guts will keep more fragile games afloat. Makes sense. Well, I mean, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And, and I bet... I, oh, sorry. And I bet I could sell Gavin on that idea, too. We need more rental storage, but it mean less ordering parts and less downtime. Okay, I'll see if there's anything down here nobody would want and nobody would need. Thank you. You know, I'm glad you're here with us at the Fun Blocks. So we're looking for a beautiful, rare, shining, hidden gem and some garbage. And some just trash. There's yep. probably plenty of trash down here. Yep. Whether you take my side or Gavin's side, it's just nice to have someone who cares about games around. Ashley's fun, but she's way more into cosplay than gaming. Pl plus, plus K. But it's kind of odd, you know? What? Feeling like I'm not alone. I know that sounds dramatic, but I'm so used to toiling away in my little workshop with, with Ashley and Gavin not really caring about the things I love. They're kind enough to me and friendly. Well, well Ashley is. But ever since you showed up, I feel like there's someone with me. It's... Odd. I'm not complaining, though. I guess it just takes getting used to. After years of feeling perfectly content to be alone. Away from strangers, crowds. I, I don't... I mean, it's not really my thing. I don't like to network like Gavin does or socialize like Ashley does. <laughs> um... And now I'm making things weird, so I'm gonna stop there. Besides, I'm just about done taking inventory down here. Uh, how about you and I? Suddenly, the shouting and stomping of feet from the floor above. What the? Sounds like there's a fight or something going on up there. I think we better go see what's what. If you'll come with me, I mean. Ah, yes, the DM. All right, are you guys done talking? Yeah. Shh, attention, please. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> The next plot point is leaving the station. The next plot point is leaving the station. <laughs> you know this. Uh. <laughs> so it's like, okay, have you, Are you, have good? you invented all of the yes. NPCs you need to invent? You've yes. gone to every store. You've made, maybe you. come up with like 16 different interactions I didn't plan for. Yep, good. Are you all right? Uh, let us continue yeah. then, yes. Yeah. I mean, in the Raftica campaign I'm running, there's literally a subway. So basically, I was like, like, it's in the thing. And it's like, okay, you're sitting on the subway. This is where you're going. <laughs> Wait till the players are all done talking. And I was like, 
they're done. Shh, bong, bong, bong. You are now approaching our destination, right? Like, they have some good answer system. I was like, perfect. That's super cool. Ah, uh, quickly, we hurry upstairs. Yeah. What's going on? I heard shouting. Uh oh, he looks bad. Hamza has ejected a representative of the Darth Carnival known as Deco's Palace from our midst. And not soon enough, in Hamza's opinion. Uh, okay, I guess everything's fine then? Excuse me, I'm gonna go get my work apron on since we'll be moving games soon. Naomi, if you don't mind, after you change, we should coordinate our wish list. I want to get that settled before the auction begins. No, don't leave me alone with the Bacchanalian Orgy Master! <laughs> Excellent. Now, let us resume the social amusements and jocularities. Are you Kader? We will speak, yes? Oh, what an intimidating presence. Hamza leads me off away from the chattering crowd. Presumably not to eat me or yell at me or anything like that. Maybe just to lick me up and down all over. Why not? I make it a point to get to know all who attend my gatherings. Clearly, I have been remiss, as I allowed one who works with the hated Deko Nami to enter. Hamza would like to know you better, my friend. Not that Hamza assumes you to be a spy, of course. It is simply a matter of what is proper and right. I'm just a floor attendant for the funplex. Not, not much else to say. Come now. Surely there's more to you than that. Share with Hamza. <laughs> Consider me an impartial third party. Surely there are matters that occupy your mind which would be inappropriate to air to your business partners. Mm. Okay, this guy is clearly on a fishing expedition for dirt. Considering the high court of arcade royalty I'm I'm supping with, maybe it's best not to give him anything. I also don't want to make relations difficult for the funplex if this guy is re really a leading supplier of cheap arcade games. I won't bore you with the whole story, but the TLDR is that my family's had a curse of foul luck for quite a few years. Moving from city to city, job to job. After I left home, I couldn't find stable work. Not until the Funplex, I guess. You've been there for two weeks, my dude. My friend. I'm determined to make this work, but I'll admit, I'm in a vulnerable, vulnerable position. It's not exactly a jet-setting executive role. Hamza agrees. Ah, yes, I see the dilemma you face. I've seen it many times before, in fact, including firsthand. Does he refer to himself in the third person? Yeah. Hamza does. Oh, yeah, I'm moving him up to number two of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have known hardship. We all have, in the course of events. Uh, we all have, in the course of events. You are not alone in that condition, Ari Kader. Hamza began as a mere urban explorer and hunter of rare objects for a wealthy buyer in Dubai. You see, many debts pursued me. And in return for assistance in paying them, I stalked the arcade of his dreams. In time, my patron released me entirely from the woes of debt. They were difficult years, productive years to be certain. And throughout them, Hamza learned how to use the mystique of being Hamza to better achieve his goals. Mm. Now I stand before you with power, and with hard-earned respect for that power. I leverage it to ensure that those who respect games as I do can enjoy them, even if they lack coin. But yes, I have known a hardship. We all have in the course of events. You are not alone in that condition, my friend. So, one cool thing with the writing is that Hamza refers to himself in the third person when he's addressing a crowd, but when he's actually being personable, he uses first-person pronouns. Oh. That's part of the 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 show. The Hamzaness. Yes. Yep. Yep. He's got a persona like we all do. Yes. Yep. He's great. Okay, so okay, so how do I get out of that condition. Do I need myself? Do I need to debt myself to a we wealthy prince or something too? <laughs> no, no. You will need the will to dream and the will to work. The will to make the trade-offs 
that will bring you closer to your ambitions. Hmm. Francine was mentioning something about that earlier. Wisdom and beauty. That is Francine. Hmm. I'm trying not to make trade-offs, though. Not to settle. My parents, they gave up on so much just to barely scrape by. Ah, that is the puzzle, is it not? What to trade? Allow me to regale you with a story. Hamza makes a, makes a sweeping gesture to the beautiful ruin of the Donnawood Mansion and to an oil painting hanging on the wall. At one time, Donna Michaels was a star on the rise. She had all she could ever desire and indulged in her desires all day long. But so indulgent was she that she failed to maintain the work that brought her there. After her second album didn't beat expectations, she lost interest. For years, she looked on these walls as a recluse playing games for hours and hours. Rumor has it that she was found dead with her beloved arcade, hand still wrapped around the joystick, a glowing joystick. She starved to death, lost in a game. I'd say that's ridiculous, but I've seen Percy play for hours and hours at a time. Good sound design. And, and now, her lost and aimless spirit haunts this very place. Adrift as a ghost in the machine. Too spoopy for me, man. Yeah. <laughs> Too spoopy indeed. <laughs> and obviously a grim fairy tale, rather than reality. But I feel there is an important truth buried in the myth. I ask you, was Donna's life spiritually satisfying? She didn't need to make any more albums. She wanted for nothing and had everything. You could even say she died doing what she loved, playing games. Okay, but she still died. No getting around that. More mic value? Uh, on us? I guess. Something but happened to it? Uh, maybe just this voice is, is a little quieter. Oh, yeah, might be. Hamza agrees. Precisely. So many years thrown away, refusing the world around her in favor of a dream. A dream is a lovely thing, Ari Kader, but you must balance a dream in one hand and the world in another, at all times. Naomi, she clings to her dream. Gavin, he clings to the world. Neither of them are truly happy as a result. And what of you, Ari Kader? Do you seek to be truly happy? Well, duh, what else was I gonna answer? Except, yes? But Hamza pressed a finger to my lips to silence me. Hold that thought. The auction is about to begin. I love Hamza. He's like our he's like our deep thoughts big outfit man. Yeah. Hamza claps twice, calling the room to attention. I like that the clap has a hollow quality to it because he's in a big room. Yep. Greetings, friends. Good job, Jacob. I didn't do that. Oh. I wasn't the sound designer. Oh. I don't I actually don't know who it was. Hold on. <laughs> Red Shoes Jeff, my dream is to offload all these fucking pizza bagels. That's the cast. Audio engineer, editing and UX, character art, narrative designer, music composer, background art. I actually don't know who did the sound design. Uh, Mark Stray... I don't know, Two Flower. Who did the sound design? Ah, we'll find out. Oh, ah, okay. At risk of revealing magic, I literally pulled clap.org off freesound.org. Fantastic. That is a good resource, especially for beginning game developers. Yep. Nice job. That's great. Good uh, job. We use a lot really of freesound clips around here. Friends, let us proceed to the arcade below. We have many games to bid on, all of which must be out the door by morning. As always, I will accept alternate bids, but test not the patience of Hamza if your bid is not a serious offer. The hours grow short. Any titles which find no takers will go to my own collection, but my hope is to find a happy home for every machine, one which will love and respect these games. He motions me to, in particular to follow as the group files downstairs. This I way, be, this way. I, I want to be in a, I want to, I want to be Holmes's assistant. That would be super cool. That would be great. <laughs> If you were Hamza's assistant, I think it was inevitable that you would see his butt at some point. Oh, probably. Yeah. He'd, pr he'd probably be like, uh, we're off to Japan. 
for yep. like a rare arcade hunting thing, and then you'd have to end up at a hot springs. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> ah, Hamza is relaxed. Yeah. Hamza has no pants. Bah, pants. <laughs> Just doing the Victor from the first episode of Yuri on Ice. You! <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, uh, for Arcade Spirits too. Yeah. Yes. This way, this way, says Hamza. Yep. A bunch of folding chairs have been set up in front of a large HDTV. One of Hamza's assistants loads up a photo slideshow of the games on offer as the group settles in. Hey, shouldn't Francine be here for this? It's technically her money. She trusts the two of us to make the right decisions on purchasing games. Plus, I'd hate to interrupt her now, or her knitting, or both. I swear she can knit in her sleep. Oh, I'm just too nervous. I'm, I, I think I'm going to go browse the games again, see if there are any I missed. It's, it's so dark down here, I swear I didn't see them all. Hmm. And how about you, Ari? Want to watch the auction with me, or help Naomi search the arcade? I'm fine either way. Oh, auction for sure. Ultimately, you're only here to help us lug our purchases out the door, so do whatever you like. Thanks, I think. Hmm. Auctioneering sounds fun. Do I get to wave our bidding paddle around? Hamza's auction are usually a shout out loud affair rather than directly signaling, but, or rather than discreetly signaling, but I admire your enthusiasm. I settle in next to Gavin on one of the rickety old folding chairs. Not quite as posh as the banquet spread above, but hey, it's business time, not indulgence time. Naomi sent me a list of games she wants me to bid on. We argued it a bit, and I managed to bring her down to three must-haves, and the rest would be nicest. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. I have no to problem. pee so bad, and I can't do this auction scene until we go to the bathroom. Would you like me to read the subs while you're gone? Yes, that sounds great. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll miss you. I don't think you will. It's going to be like two minutes. <laughs> Uh, Insidious Pie is cheered with 100 bits, uh, 100 uh, happy hearts. This has been the best community that I'm a part of. I know monies are not a requirement, but I'm glad to be able to support you when I can. Thank you very much, Insidious Pie. Dark Adestra, subscribe for 57 months. Dear Lord, that's a long time. Well done. Wonder Moo has cheered with 1,000 bits. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Adam YMHMI just subscribed. Thank you very much and welcome. Uh, to subscription, and thank you very much for being here. Uh, Carbonyl Cookie, subscribe for 40 months. Home early enough to get stream due to snow. Almost makes up for snow. Almost. Uh, Zenito69, uh, hold on, sorry, excuse me, you pushed it down. Um, Phoenix Melior, uh, Phoenix, Phoenix Melior, Phoenix Melior, Phoenix Melior, just subscribed thanks to an anonymous gifter. 50 bits from Xanto69 has cheered with 50 bits. Uh, 50 bits, so glad to see more of this game being played. I'm really looking forward to getting it myself. Thank you very much for supporting both Loading Ready Run and Arcade Spirits. Dr. Adraknon, subscribe for seven months. I get to catch now Kiss today. Hooray, I did a dating sim for Global Game Jam this year and was so excited. Now watching Jacob's Joy is seeing someone play his game brings back such good memories. Thank you both for a wonderful stream. You are very welcome and thank you very much for being here. 100 bits, thanks for this wonderful little cake of a stream. You are very, very welcome. Uh, Reinerd. Uh, you know what? I want Jacob to read Reinerd, read Reinerd sub out. I have done so. Uh, Tanatos, the dead toes. Subscribe for 53 months. Kissing and video games? Sign me up. Basil Hunter, subscribe for 27 months. Thanks, Jacob, for giving us such interesting insight into Arcade Spirits. It's my absolute pleasure. Two Flower is also here to answer questions. And I believe I saw Sharky Anna uh, also here, who are the two uh, developers for the game. Basil Hunter, subscribe for... I already did that. Sorry, excuse me. I did not click the thing. Nick the DM, subscribe for 37 months. Hey, Jacob, just wanted to personally thank you for helping me realize I'm not 100% straight. So thanks. Also, your game is drad. Good job. I am honored and delighted. It is my pleasure. Um, I am also not 100% straight because I am bisexual. Uh, Arikel just subscribed. Thank you very much for the new subscription. Kathleen is back. All of those are cleared. Jacob's gonna go pee. Okay. Hi chat, how's it going?
Hi, jacket. Jacob's jacket. What a nice jacket. Not a nice blue chair. Hi, blue chair. I feel like these bits could be eyes. And put a mouth here and it's just like a big ghost. I don't know. Is this gas tape in this room? Darn. I could put I could just put like a like smiley face here. And be like, hi co-host, how's it going? <laughs> now I really want to do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put some some gaff in a little half moon. Should I have should I give it teeth? I should definitely give it teeth. Aw, oh, chair looks so sad. Chair Chan. Well, like if I give it a smiley face, it'll be okay. Who's that with Kathleen? I don't recognize them. It's Chair Chan. Chair Tan. Teeth. <laughs> Yay, we found gold in the graveyard in the form of somebody's teeth. When did Paul say that? Chair Tan is the best. Whoa, Shade of Hades, you have a chair emote. Awesome. <laughs> March of 2016, apparently. I don't remember that. Uh, MT chair, MTG Pro Tour commentator. Uh, oh, were people talking about Second Life? Apparently it was a lot. Is it still going? My friend John, many, 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 many years ago worked for Linden Labs, and he was just like, there was a lot going on in this game. It's like, apparently the community was just drama. Yes, somehow. Holy shit, wow. Good for them, I guess, then. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's Kate's chair. How long has Kate had a chair? Hmm. There's no Jacob quotes in here? Oh my. Well, we'll get some in here eventually. Oh no, it's quote Jacob. Get tender fools! Yeah, there we are. Preparation is the key to laziness. Well, there's no quotes about Jacob. <laughs> we'll figure it. We'll get it. Oh. We'll, we'll get it in there sometime. Sorry about that work stuff. Oh, that's okay. All right, let's Super do this. Let's do this auction, which I think might be sort of the last thing that happens on this New Day Tuesday stream. Cause it's I think so, yes. But what a good preview of the game! Oh. But how long is the game? Uh, I think 15 hours? It's quite long, because yeah, this it's... is like... Because we did almost two and a half hours. Right, and then uh, um, Matt and Ben show up again in Chapter 6. Oh, yeah. wow. Chapter 6, okay. Yep. Uh, wow. Yeah, Roland Mayus just subscribed for 43 months, saying this game was already on my radar. Jacob's work, baby. Just want it more. Now I can't wait till work is over to play it for myself. There's oh, eight chapters total. Two Flower says there's two eight chapters flowers. total, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, like, ten, I would imagine 10 to 15 hours. And then there's an incredible amount of replayability because each chapter has, like, different paths. So if you want to hear, like, a lot of the voice work and things like that. Because we haven't even gotten to... Uh, Deco Nami was uh, mentioned. And right. that's Mark Mir. Who is Commander Shepard in Mass Effect? Oh, his, so or he's Mil, the bad Mil guy. Shep. He is. He is our villain and is fucking so good. Oh, you got Mir? <laughs> I did. I did, in fact, get Mark Mir. I feel like that's the correct way to interpret an Intero bang for a cold <laughs> read. Intero? Oh, yes, yes. The question mark. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Mark Mir is an Edmontonian. Uh, we have been in a couple of video games together, and. Um, I'm, I'm, we are buddies? I'm gonna go with buddies. I'm nice. gonna go with buddies, yes. We, we, uh, we have been trying to have a coffee when I go out to Edmonton and stuff like that, but that doesn't, it, it hasn't happened yet because we're both not in Edmonton at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, on to the... But he's super good. But yes, to anyway, auction. on to the auction. Why would you not want to see the auction? I guess so you could go spend time with Naomi. If you've already played the game and you're like, Meh. Yes. Max Naomi. Yep. <coughs> Anyhow, we got our list of games from Naomi. Needless to say, if the would-be nice to start bidding up, I won't be bothered. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Do we have storage space for the would-be nices? Well, technically, yes. What about the cash? Like I said, only if they don't get driven through the roof. Then, maybe keep an open mind, right? Don't forget to see the forest for the trees while looking at the bigger picture. Or... 
something. <laughs> right, right. As Francine says, I know. But there are certain hard realities in play. It has begun. <laughs> I half expect mid '90s techno to start blasting as his sideshow begins, but no, just pretty photos of old games. Behold. <laughs> That's the line I was waiting for. It has, it has begun. begun. Uh, <laughs> it, the the direction for that was literally say it like the dude from Mortal Kombat. Mm. Yep. Look at these beautiful games. They could be yours, all yours. But before we dive right in, I'd like a moment of recognition for Donna Michaels, whose spirit inhabits these halls. We who are about to rescue her games do so out of respect for her and her passions. May her soul be at peace with her beloved arcade in good hands. I thought he didn't believe that tall tale. Or is he just being theatrical because that is the way of Hamza? Now then, shall we commence the auction, friends? I settle in and wait for Gavin to take an interest in the games on bid. Our next item up for bid... Oh, hey, I recognize this. It's a joust, just like the one I moved out into the floor two weeks ago. Gavin frowns at his tablet, confused. Why is this on Naomi's must-have list? We already own one of these. The bidding opens at a pittance. A mere fifty dollars. Gavin shakes his head, ready to let this slide by. Stick with the replacement parts. Because that was your original. Yeah. yeah. A machine breaks down a lot, right? Well, having a spare in storage would mean not needing to buy more parts for it. Impressive. Astute. And a good reason to bid on it. I agree. Iris, give me a quick price check on the sum of all key components in a joust machine. As oh, you... oh her, wow. his Iris looks different. Hell yeah, awesome. As you wish, Mr. Cooper. Wait, you have an Iris too? I suppose. I can't say I like it, but yes. A premium Iris account. You have the free version, correct? I doubt it would be capable of complex queries such as this. Done. Individual components compounded together compiled to $400. Gavin gets to his feet. $300, please. Such fire! Oh! At last, Gavin Cooper shows his fire. Will anyone step? Mm. $1,000 to complete my Midway collection. Oh, well, crap. Hamza must consider this. A curious leap. Gavin, tell me, why do you seek this game? Oh, he's gonna, if he says it's for spare parts. Yeah. And Naomi's pride and joy is a fully restored joust, but it breaks down frequently. I want to keep her dream alive by giving her an organ donor. Oh, you have put Hamza in a strange position, you have. <laughs> Between a collector craving his holy grail and a young girl's dreams. So, but Hamza must bow to fiscal forces that keep his fantasies afloat. Sold for $1,000. Seems once he hears a bit he likes, it's all over. No going once or going twice. However, as Hamza is not without a heart, I have a mostly working copy of that game in my personal stocks that I've been meaning to restore. Gavin Cooper? I grant it to you for free. Oh, wow. Free? Such is the iron will of Hamza. Such, I am not, I'm not going to deliver that better than a cash did. The collector sits grumbling. Thank you. Thank you, Hamza. You are most kind. I am most capricious, but thank <laughs> you for the praise all the same. Onward. I want to be Hamza when I grow up. Our next item for auction is this rather a unique piece and he gads that is one ugly football game looks like the side art stickers weren't even put on straight the white part is totally uneven the marquee's been broken the monitor has a big old as is note joy star the joysticks are four different clashing colors and do i hear 50 dollars 40 Wait, I nudge Gavin, whispering. Put a bit on it. Pardon? Why? It's positively grotesque. I recognize the shape and the joystick colors. It's not really a football game. It's TMNT. 
Naomi told me earlier that we need one of those. I thought they had only had the crappy two-player one, but that's definitely a TMNT at heart. <laughs> ah, it's a cheaply done conversion. No doubt some fool thought he'd get more profits off a sports game and easily chopped it up. I, it'd need restoration work, granted, but... Slowly he's dead. I suppose. Up. Hmm. I suppose I'd be willing to take it for $40. Maybe we can salvage the monitor. I forgot about your sugar thing, so I actually brought these uh, organic snacks with no sugar. They're little fruit gummies. Would you like some? No, I'm okay right now. Okay. <clears throat> good, good. I'm going to talk with my mouth while I'm hungry. All games deserve a good home, even the ugly ducklings. Are there any other bids? No? Not a one? Very well. Sold. Sold to Gavin Cooper of the Fun Flex. Thank you. After Gavin sits down, I can swear I spotted Hamza wink at me. Does he know we just conned him? Is he okay with that? Of course he is. Impressive. You know, Ari, you're more knowledgeable about old arcade games than I thought you'd be. Oh, my parents took me to arcades all the time back when I was a kid. I had a few favorites, like TMNT, Qbert, and... Uh-oh. And those were good times. Better times. Very well. Well, I suppose you can relive those good times a little once Naomi restores that game. During your breaks and after work, please. Yes, sir. I realize my demeanor is one of seriousness, but... It's not like I'm anti-fun. I enjoy a pinball game or two, for that matter. Mm, I thought that was more for the challenge, though. Order to Chaos, developing mastery over the game, and so on. Which is fun for me. Fun is a highly variable concept from person to person. Very mm. true. Whoops. The Funplex provides fun in any form the visitor requires. That's my end game, the goal I reach for. The tricky part, I've found, is balancing conflicting fun. Ensuring as many dreams are realized as possible, despite reality being rather harsh about it all. I love that Gavin's trying to, like, game dreams. <laughs> oh. We'll need to watch our budget today if we're going to optimize that fun. Do you understand? So far we've gotten two things for 40 bucks. We're doing ah. great. Ah. I guess. Being optimal is fun for you. I suppose it is at that. Revel in the splendor. <laughs> oh my. Next, a rare find indeed. What would surely be the jewel of any collector's treasure trove, provided they are discerning collectors who appreciate such splendors. And the next game is a black and white driving game from 1970X. I give you Death Race. Inspired by the movie of the same name and decorated with skulls, it sparked controversy nationwide. Seriously? That relic is seriously on Naomi's must-have list? Absolutely not. Not only is it an ancient artifact of a bygone age, I'd rather not have angry parents uh, have angry parents mad that little Timmy ran people over in a video game. They're gremlins, not humans. Very, very blurry little white blobs of gremlins. Doesn't matter, it won't earn, and earning is critical for a small arcade as ours. I mean, that's, that's your call. Yeah. Okay, so it wouldn't earn, but it's a legendary game, Gavin. And the importance, its importance in the lore, the lore of arcades is undeniable. More importantly, Naomi wants this game. You told me your dream is to support the dreams of others. Considering we've got a Joust for free and got a TMNT for pennies on the dollar, I think we can afford to make her dream come true. You're right. I had intended. I've been letting so many of her wishes slip by during this auction. Perhaps this is the ideal time to make it up to her and obtain a unique treasure. Hamza, the Funplex bids $250. Gadzooks, I find a find like that can't go for a paltry two fifty. No, I bid three hundred. Four hundred dollars. Consonant five hundred dollars. Such fire. Five. We have five. Do we have any numbers above that? Six. Six of one, half dozen of another. 
entire nation. Hmm. No one willing to match? Sold. It seems you have won yourself a piece of arcade history, Gavin Cooper. Sold. Apparently, we're dropping many, many frames. Oh. No. Ah. Okay, hold on. Time out here. Okay, frame drops and occasionally buffering. The sound is fine for me, but the video keeps dropping out. That's very strange. Twitch is getting squirrely. I. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna take the stream offline and start and bring it up again. The audio is fine, which is the most important part. Getting stable sound and buffering video, which makes it me think that something is hammering our connection and it's not Twitch. Uh, just one second. Hammering our connection, title of my sex tape. Yeah. Okay, bye! We'll be right back. I miss you. So we're dropping frames for sure. Uh, mm. But we want to finish up the stream because you got the audio okay. I don't know what's going on. All the Twitch ingest servers are bad, and I've tested our internet here. I know we're losing frames. So let's finish this up so we can get to the end of this exciting ar arcade auction. What time is it? It's like 2, 3 p.m. exactly, or do you have to go immediately? I kind of have to go immediately. Okay. I can, I can, I do. Oh. Uh, you know what? I can do, I can push it another 10 minutes. Okay. How much longer do you think we have in this? I have no idea. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, good news, because you've won yourself a piece of arcade history, Gavin Cooper. Cooper sold. sold. Satisfied. Gavin sits back down and offers me a curt nod of thanks. And that's everything on our list. Well, the must-haves and a few of the would-be nices. Yay! And now to sit and wait while Hamza grinds his way through the rest of the stock. We can't start moving games out until the auction's complete. What if something sick comes mm. up? Hmm. Naomi's not replying to text. Can you go find her? I'm sure she's around here somewhere. Let her know what we bought. Sure thing. Leaving the excitable auction master and his compatriots behind, I started wandering through the maze-like arcade of Donald Wood's private collection. Naomi! Naomi, where the heck are you? It's dark and quiet back here. Where could Naomi be? It's not like it's an infinite plane of games. Ah. There's only so many places she could be. There's only so many places she could hide. As I walk by a game, the screen lights up. I freeze in my tracks. My hand accidentally brushes past <laughs> the glowing joystick. Amazing. It seems familiar. Like something from a story I heard once. Hamza. Hamza's tall tale. He said Donna Michaels supposedly died while playing one of these games. A game with a glowing joystick. I should walk away. I should go. I have official Funplex duties. I've been very good about not gaming when I should be working. Paul, Polybus. Oh my god. I don't get this reference. Uh, Polybius. Polybius. Uh, Polybius is, um, Two Flyer explains it way better. Um, Polybius is part of, like, kind of gaming lore and everything like that. It's a cursed arcade game that makes people go crazy when they play it. There you go. Ah, the urban arcade mythical legend. It's yes. an urban myth of a murderous arcade game. Okay. Oh, this is the arcade spirit. One of them, yes. And and arcade spirits are the dreams that we made along the way. Hmm. <laughs> but someone's already inserted a quarter. The game is ready to play. One game couldn't hurt, right? Just one game... I want to play the game. Ha! <laughs> ah, 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 play the game, play the game, play the game, play the game. I don't believe in ghosts. Two Flyer says this would be a good stopping point. Oh. Well, in that case, great. Okay. Let's save it. Let's do our Iron Man save. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks for joining us here on Arcade Spirits. Um, I'm not going to be playing any more of this game on stream because I want you to buy it. But maybe we'll come back to it at another point. That would be A couple awesome. months down the line. I would and something that. like that. And we'll pick this game up. Uh, but no, you can't leave us like this. Well, I have a good way of letting you find out what happens in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so thank you so much to Jacob, who's going to peace out immediately. Uh, Jacob, yes. uh, before you go, yep. 
where can people find you? Uh, Twitter is where I am most active, which is uh, at Jacob Burgess VO. Uh, also, um, be, uh, because I uh, one of my new contracts I was hired on is the Community and Influencer Relationships Manager for Yesbird Games, which is a publisher of games like Masquerada Song and Shadows, which is I am a voice actor in, and Valhalla, which is the cyberpunk bartending game. I will be starting to stream for... Uh, I, I am creating a channel and starting to stream for them and going to be running their Discord, both of which are going to launch next Tuesday. So you can find them at Yisbrid uh, Games, uh, Y-S-B-Y-R-D Games on Twitch. Uh, so Tuesday nights are going to be me playing through the Yisbrid catalog and just kind of sampling all of the games and showing people and talking about the, the publisher. And then the second night on Thursday nights... Um, uh, our friend Liz Smith and an associate with Capcom sent me a copy of Resident Evil 2 because uh, they found out that I'd never played a horror game and on our Friends of Usbrid stream they wanted me to play a horror game and I've never played one before so that should be fun uh, for varying levels of fun um, Do you have anybody to sit with you nope. in case you get scared? Nope mm -mm. Nope Not at all Yes. Uh, Anime Kitty, no, I do not voice in Valhalla. I voice in Masquerada Song and Shadows, which is another game under the uh, property. So we're going to be trying next Tuesday. We're going to be playing through the demo of World of Horror, and I'm just kind of going to introduce uh, people to me and the, the, the stream and and things like that. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, and then I'm writing for Vampire the Masquerade and and another video game I can't talk about and that's what I'm doing. Follow me on Twitter and you're all amazing and thank you so much very much for being here. Yay! I really appreciate it. I think okay. our frame dropping issue may have cleared up. People have not said that it is a slideshow now. So hopefully <laughs> that works out great for James. Speaking of James, oh, we gotta get out of here because James is supposed yeah. to be starting ooh, one more yep. and about Ooh, one minute. So <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I'm just nice. going to make sure we didn't miss any uh, last second subs. We did. Oh, we did. Matthew Dauber subscribed for three months. Zoe Forchi subscribed for five months, saying five months has been a good time. It's also good to see the Raider, one of my favorite. Uh, TTRPG, tabletop RPG settings as well. Thank you. I assume that is either me or Jacob. We both... Hey. Right stuff. Yes. But it's probably Jacob. Uh, Roman, uh, Raymond Damon, subscribed for two months, saying, I looked up from playing Arcade Spirits to find you guys also playing. I totally remember that I was that it was scheduled and I wasn't just and it wasn't just released. Hee <laughs> hee. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, if you like the game, two flowers in chat. Check it out on Itch.io or Steam or Humble or like uh, uh, like eight different other places. Bye, everybody. All right. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.